Good evening and welcome to the oh, November 4th. Right <laughs> no, Want me to highlight 4th. that too? Yeah. <laughs> um, before we get Gash started, anyone with any electronic devices or cell phones, would you oh, please would nice. silence them or turn them off? Thank you. Um, if you're here to speak on any of these applications, and um, we encourage you to do so. If the only thing we ask you to make sure you speak into the microphone. Go to the podium, speak into the microphone, and give your name and address. Um, and then have yeah. your say. Um, is anyone here recording this meeting or planning on videotape or anything like that? Okay, I'll be explaining that. So we'll move on. First on the agenda tonight is the vote, the minutes of October 14th. We just got those in, Mr. Chairman, so you'll be voting those at your next uh, meeting. Okay. October 28th. Betsy. On page uh, 14, before you get to the 152 plus 160 pen please reflect the fact that Kristen and Courtney and I left the room. And then on page 15, um, sort of after the, after it's all one paragraph, the next paragraph, uh, Mr. Powers moves to accept something, Maury seconded, and then you have the vote, and you have the no vote, and it's Matthews, Schumacher, and you have Gladfelter, I wasn't there. So that next one is Harlow Box. And, and me. So I'll give it to you. Okay. Great. Thank you. And I don't know if there's anything else. Anyone else? On uh, October 28th minutes. Uh, I have a few minor corrections, <clears throat> but um, page 17, the <laughs> paragraph where it starts Miss McKay, huh? I believe that <laughs> needs um, a clarification that it would be intent to replicate the wetland in its uh, pre-constructed uh, location. What was that, Mike? Again? If you go back to the, the, your first paragraph on that sentence, in fact, it's, it's a summary of the findings for, the, for our 160 on 1884. Mm -hmm. And I think that should reference our finding on page 15. The first paragraph, I, I don't believe it's clear going back that the, the, it was to restore and replicate the wetland in its original Original state. condition, okay. I think that should be in there as part of it. Now, I got a couple of minor wording changes on that sentence I met. I, I suppose we just pass it along. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. There you go. <coughs> okay, anything else? I want to turn a motion on October 28th minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes as discussed. Second. Laurie and Betsy. Any other comments from the commission? Hearing none. We'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Is that, uh, unanimous, so moved. Other business. Review Troop 40 camp out request. Um, Sousa Conservation Area, Friday, November 13th to Sunday, November 15th, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, you received a request from Troop 40 to camp um, at the Sousa Conservation Grounds. They do this annually. You generally approve it with a few conditions, and they're always very good stewards. So moved. Second. Thank you. With the same conditions as usually applied. Correct. So we have Betsy and Maury on the second. And I have a comment to Bill. The last time I was there, which was like two weeks ago, They'll have, they'll have some work to do. Yes. There's some trash to clean up. Yeah. Any other comments from the commission? Any other comments from the public? If you're hearing none, I call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. I will review the Falmouth Academy request for a Chase the Turkey race on November 26, 2015, Thanksgiving Day. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Falmouth Academy is. Um, requesting permission to use the trails in BB Woods to hold the annual Chase the Turkey Race. So, so what is it, 4.8? 4. 4. So it's yeah, like I mean, a four-plus four mile so. race yeah. um, that's held every Thanksgiving. Okay, so we got a motion by Betsy. 
Second. I'll second it. Courtney second. Any other discussion on the submission? Any other discussion from the public? We're going to call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Extension, you know, so moved. Uh -huh. Plenty of them around. They might go to the board's occasion. Okay, approve letter of agreement for CPC funding. Yes, Mr. Chairman, these are two letters that the CPC needs you to sign. Um, it's just going into basically an agreement with the CPC for funding. If you all remember, you uh, approved the submittal of two applications to the CPC, one for the purchase of the CR for the Kelly Woodland, um, working with the 300 committee, and to, again, working with the 300 committee, um, going for um, some funding to do an environmental assessment of sh the Shivrix Pond area to improve public access and enhance the public access around the pond. And these are just two letters that, it, as a formality, need to be signed and passed, but we suggest that you take a vote on it. I make a vote that we, um, I mean, a motion that we accept it and sign it. Second. Well, Ross will sign it, so. Okay, any, any other comments or questions? Any commission? Comments or questions from the public? Hearing none, call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Abstentions unanimous, so moved. Okay, up next is a re request for a determination of applicability. Mr. These Chair. are the lesser of the two applications. What you want to hear is a negative it's on not these. And the first up is Town of Falmouth, DPW, Wastewater Management Care of Jerry Potamus. And for permission to connect underground piping connections to the town sewer. No, I'm not going to read that. No. <laughs> I want I've Jerry to read it. <laughs> I, I'd like to suggest that, we, uh, suggest that we incorporate this description into the minutes. Thank you. Courtney. Thank you. <laughs> Give you something to do. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Yes, I'm so yes Mr. Chairman, just to, oh, yeah, to let you yeah. all know, the town of Falmouth filed on behalf of the 700 plus property owners in the Little Pond Sewer Service Area that actually fall within your jurisdiction, either just in a floodplain or within 100 feet of a resource area because there was going to need a permit for when these people go to connect their homes to the sewer system. We've come up with a list of conditions for each type of property. Obviously, we'll put the caveat that we will invoke um, or we, you know, retain the right to add additional conditions if the site conditions um, yeah, yeah. go awry. But um, it's just a basic set of conditions to control the uh, sedimentation and erosion. So. For the first one, we are recommending a negative two on the state and bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So, so moved. Second. So it was Courtney and Maury, is that the right word? Yes. yes. Okay. Discussions among the commission members? Yes. So, uh, um, all for it, but it's a little odd in that there is no way for me to know that this is either complete or inclusive, and I'm just taking people at their work. <coughs> Normally we have an RD, RDA, we know which piece of property we're talking about. On here. We we do know. We have maps that were created by GIS. Has, has, any, has anybody um, We've gone checked to look, each yeah. one of these? Well, Alex, um, the compliance person, um, has driven around the Little Pond Sewer Service Area site. We know which properties we are specifically concerned with. Okay. Most of these are, I mean, half of them are in the flood zone only. Um, there are a couple of properties that we're going to keep an eye on behind the mall along Miami Ave in the lower areas where dewatering might be a problem. Um, and, and we those are. Properties are yes, on we know that. We know which properties there are. We've already impressed. flagged them down in the office. I am duly impressed. Thank you. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of work was put in to by Bob Shea and GIS and Jennifer. They spent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And then. And, and Jerry. <laughs> Mr. Potamus, to also, sorry, Jerry, I didn't mean to cut you out of it. I mean, Jerry is the guy who is more responsible. I'm talking to the people who are trying to fix it. Right. I mean, there, there are going to be, you know, the, the plumbers will be aware that they, they're they okay. going to have this document and they will. Um, and it's going to be and it's going to be flagged. Yeah. So when it We're pops up with when the they come in department. to pull the application out, it's going to say you need to conduct the conservation first. Yeah. And that's when it will be handed out. Quite. Yeah. For everybody involved, the town, the property owners, and everything, this is a, a nice 
efficient way to handle this. It really was. Yeah, and it be, hopefully it becomes a model for future stuff that we have to do. You've done a nice job, Jennifer. Thank you. Yes. So we had a motion and a second, correct? Yes. We do that. So any other Thank comments, questions? Okay, hearing none from the commission. Comments and questions from the public. <laughs> Jerry, anything else? You're good. He's good. I think you need to read the second one. <laughs> hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstention, Janelle, so moved. All right, the second one. Tom Fowman, GPW Wastewater Management, care of Jerry Patamus. With J. Is that, did I miss that? Oh, sorry about that, Jack. Wow. For permission to connect an, un um, an underground piping connection to town sewer line. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw and the resource area boundary is not confirmed. So moved. Second. And Courtney, can we do Courtney's, uh, would you give us the uh, incorporation okay. again, Courtney? Yeah. The what? We the we that we incorporate. Yeah. Yeah. The motion incorporated within it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hold on, Mr. Chairman. Do you have a question? I made the motion. And I second it. They're saying With to, the, to incorporate that all of these are under. I Jason, you incorporated all this, Susan. What? That Jason. you've incorporated all these names in the minutes. Yeah. That's what the, that's what Courtney said. Yeah. We'll yeah in other words, we, we got it. it to you to transcribe. This. We got it. All right. There's going to be, it by be some wordsmithing. From, uh, you're, no, you're not word smithing <laughs> anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other exactly comments or questions? <laughs> I'm just going to sit there. <laughs> Everybody good? <laughs> comments or questions from the public? All right, hearing none, I'll call for vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. All right, next up is Marine Biological Labs. Lab, care of Dr. Ann Giblin, Quisset Harbor. Area between Quisset Boatyard Dock and Quisset Land Trust Dock, Woods Hole Mass, for permission to install an in situ diffuser technology using 4LS 1290 diffusers, each 12 inch by 12 inch by 2.5 inches in height, uh, placed on the Bethic surface to provide oxygen to sediment. This sounds familiar, Sia. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we're recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Second. I just had one yeah, question. Betsy and Maury, yes. like that. Okay, questions or comments from the commission? I just had one. I'm sorry. Um, I just want to make sure that the applicant knows that if there's a storm, the 5x5 five five compressor can be removed quickly. And I don't know if that's possible, but it should be in the, their uh, work. Okay. And did we get a map? to show exactly where this was out in Yes, we have one. Okay. That's oh, and how does the plate not move? I have a question. No anchoring yeah. needed attached to a plate that will sit on the benthic surface, how, surface. How does it not move? You need to come up to the microphone. Can you come to the microphone, please? Thank you. Ma'am, you need to identify you yourself for the record. Uh, and you live in Road, Fountain. Thanks. So if it's, is each one on a 12 by 12 plate? Yeah. And what is a plate? Thick steel or? It's, it's, it's steel and it's, the air is, the air is actually going through the plate, so it's not like the aeration is on the plate. The, the plate is part of the aeration system. And have these been used anywhere else? They're, they've been used in lakes, these particular systems. There haven't been used in estuaries to my knowledge. Okay, where there's tide, that was my concern. Is it? It's not just the air; it's the tide. So, anyway, that's. I'm sure you'll figure it out. <laughs> if they move, you're not going to want them to move. Thank you, Mary. I'm just um, curious as to uh, is this considered town land here, or I'm wondering if the the MBL I don't think is a property owner here, is it? Quested Harbor, it's a town. Um, Blend in yeah, well the ocean is state. Is it, do we need, state. do we need an application from the town? It's state. actually the state owns the land under the, the ocean. state. Well, Isn't the state land under the ocean? I think you have to go, have you gone before the board of selectmen? Or are you planning to have that kind of Not for an RDA, you don't have to have the written yeah, permission. But, but 
they probably should. It would probably, it would be prudent. It would be yeah. prudent to. The water, I'm here because the water quality, this is for a grant application. You have to tell us who you are. I see a car park. <laughs> I'm technical coordinator for the water quality management committee. And Anne came before the water quality committee um, uh, several weeks ago. Um, and the water quality committee has, has uh, voted to partner with the MDL on a grant. It's the Southeast New England. It's a step grant. The next round, hopefully. Um, to do this as a demonstration project. There you go. So that's that's how. Well, I think it's a great idea, but I yeah. think the board of selectmen should be made aware yeah. of, of where work is being done. Just like just like I think we should be made aware of where work is being done in the water. Uh huh. That's how we can do this. We thought this would be the place to tell the town that work is being done in the water. Well, I'm, it's the it's the board of selectmen who have to give permission. You know, like if somebody has a has a piling in the water, uh -huh. they have to go where the board is selecting for permission in addition to our permission. Okay. I'm just saying, yeah. we, 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 we can't say that you have to do it. I'm just saying it would be nice if people would yeah. tell these various bodies what they were doing, where they were doing it. Yeah. No, they did. They were, they were, they were up front with us, the, the selectmen thing. I didn't even think of. No, I'm so, not saying that we're not private. I mean, when we have, have a private applicant system. trying to do something on their property and it involves somebody else's the shorefront, the town has, you know, the selectmen have to be involved in that. Um, I don't see why we can't prove this with that proviso. No, I, it's, I it's different. Okay, guys, it's different. You're all talking at once. It is di it, there is a different process when it comes to an RDA because you do have an applicant in the audience that had to go through the board of selectmen for their notice. That requires written permission from the property owner. This is a little bit a looser process. So what I would say is just advise the, the applicant That's that they were, yeah, I know, that they probably should go and make the Board of Selectmen aware. Okay. Everybody's talking over each other. Yeah, we, we can go ahead and approve. This and this one starts. We do that. And yeah, we have a motion That's part second. of what they do. Okay, so any other discussion? Hearing yeah, I, I, I just I just want to say I can't wait to hear what your results are. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks. Right, any other discussion from the public? Okay, if you're none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions <coughs> All right, next up is Richard Swain, 35 Gunning Point <laughs> Avenue, <laughs> Falmouth, oh, Mass. For permission to remove existing <laughs> bluegrass lawn and irrigation system and to install new irrigation lines and sprinkler heads, replace lawn with drought tolerant fescue sod, loam to be regraded without additional material, uh, no bulk of vegetation to be disturbed, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, uh, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Mike and Maury. Discussion amongst the board. I would just recommend that that staff um, informs them that this is within a resource area and you tell them our bylaws because whenever I see the family friendly lawn, um, that you can't fertilize or use whatever, just so they know. Okay. I don't think that word's got out very well yet. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, well, this is not a uh, notice of intent, so we can't put a requirement in there not to have irrigation, but... If it already has a, an existing irrigation system. I know they do, but if they're putting in a drought tolerant lawn, why do they need <coughs> irrigation? They, they really don't need to put an irrigation system in, except maybe a temporary irrigation system to allow for the first year to allow the lawn to get established. Those are those are my comments. Uh -huh. Whether we whether we can enforce that or not, it's a separate, a different thing. But <coughs> I don't see any need for irrigation if they're going to put a drought tolerant lawn in. Sort of redundant, and it, it, certainly if it's there, the water's going to run too much, and it hold. In fact, the lawn won't develop as strongly mm -hmm. as it should if it's got. It needs to get its roots way down into the soil, and it won't go down deep in the soil if it's getting watered in the first two inches all the time. So it's kind of like a self-defeating thing. We can make so, a note of that. Well, I would like to see an adjunct letter go back with the approval of the board 
does not think kindly of putting a new irrigation system in, particularly with a drought tolerant law and for the reasons we just discussed. Okay. Anything else? Any comments or questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Abstentions? Unanimous so moved. Right, right. Totally. Yeah, you're right, Bart. All right, next up is Mark Comstock and Margaret Fitzgerald, 16 Nantucket Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, the existing dwelling and construct a new house in a similar footprint and to remove the existing paved driveway and replace with smaller crushed stone or shell driveway. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are proposing a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. Second. What so we have a area? motion by um, Land Betsy, subject to coastal storm and flowers. a second by Maury. Questions or comments? What do you got? Courtney wanted to know what the resource area is and it's land subject to coastal storm flowage so only. It's, so it's basically flood zones. Yes, yeah, so it's a flood zone. Okay. Um, my question is going to be what's meant by similar footprint? Um, but, I mean, it may or may not matter. I mean, if it's, all, if it's a flood no, zone. No, it, it, it's close, but just so you can see. Can we have a couple of plans? There you go. So that's the existing house, and that's the proposed house. Yeah. I just thought the number of Nantucket Avenue was Oh, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. I see that. I see that. When I thought the Nantucket Avenue was in D.C. Yeah, it runs all over oh. town. You agree, Mary? Yes, thank okay. you. You know what you down there? It runs all the way down. No, you're on the other side of the middle. He's right. on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Click over. He's so on the other I'll side. Check. If I can get through all the, um, I can get through all the detours, I'll go check. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Nothing else. Okay. Comments and questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Abstention, Janana, so move. Next up is National Grid, care of Deborah Blanche. Uh, Sipwisset Highlands along Clues Drive and Punchbowl Punch Drive, Falmouth, Mass. Permission to extend gas, lane, gas main service from the existing mains oh. on Sipwisset Road and Terhune Drive to Sipwisset Highlands along Clues Drive and Punch Bowl Drive, which includes connections to residential houses and all installations within the road right of ways, driveways, and lawns. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the bylaw and negative three under the state with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Courtney and Mari, questions or comments from the Commission? Yes, I have one. I'm wondering how, uh, what we do when the pipes have been opened up, you know, the road has been opened up and, you know, it's, it, the soil is all over. Is there some, way, you had talked about that previously about mm -hmm. rolling hay bales? Usually, right, yeah. but it, it doesn't seem like there's any way to follow up and, I, I mean, I've, I saw a pipe put in on Sipwisset Road and it was kind of a mess for a month afterwards and, and they never came back to clean it. So I'm just wondering, okay. you know, how to... Are you a Deborah? Mm -hmm. I am here on behalf of uh, National Grid, or uh, Colonial Gas doing business as National Grid. I am Amanda Crouch Smith with a tie in bond. Um, National Grid typically will excavate about 150 linear feet a day, backfill that, so there is no trench or excavation open overnight. Um, if that speaks to your question, um, I know there are. Uh, no, what I saw in SIP was that after they put the pipe in was a, a whole load of dirt that was just running down back was into the road. Was this a gas line or was it a separate utility? No, it was, it was your, your company, yeah. yeah. So I'm just but wondering. How much, are they going to mole any of that or is it all going to be trench work? From what I have been told, the contractor is looking to commence January 2016 and they're looking to complete um, on average 150 linear feet a day and to be exempt and continue to be a minor activity under the Wetlands Protection Act, 
you can trench no more um, than you can back you on. Don't you, don't, you, don't, you understand what I'm talking about, mold? Yeah, I, I, I believe they're to. just opening a two foot wide they're foot trench. Okay, trench. So they're they're going to trench yeah, this whole trench thing. Okay. I had a question. Yes. yes. Um, as soon as you said the date, January 16th, um, there are no asphalt plants open. And so your concern is even more paramount because you're just going to be compacting and leaving it for the winter with snow plowing and everything else. And I let's will have to follow up on that because I was um, working on a similar project and I was under the impression that the moratorium was on November 15th as far as um, getting uh, that material to close off those trenches. I um, thought you just said January 16th. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. But this, works, but this is for a se separate yes. work. Right. Um, I spoke with my contact uh, today at National Grid, and the contractor is hoping to start in January. Um, so I, well, I again, have to follow up on that as far as it, that does not line up, and I acknowledge that. Yeah. Right, okay, because that's, I mean, if you, January 16th, you're yeah. going to have open Correct. holes. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have erosion. That. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. sorry. So that's a big concern. And the other thing is obviously lawns, you can't seed them, so it's just going to be raw dirt, and we know what January, February, March, and April are. So. Unless they can maybe put this off or speed it up, one or the other, um, I'm not for this being done in January at all. No, I'm not either. For the reasons you suggest. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice for people to get gas, but the problem is, is that when they call back and ask for, you know, some assistance with what has happened to the yard, they don't get anybody. So, um, you know, they're the homeowners stuck cleaning up the mess and the runoff. That's. I'm, I'm not sure how you can handle that. You know, we had talked. You had talked about those mm -hmm. straw bales. Yeah, the the bio logs that the move. Bio logs. But it yeah. will not help in this situation in the winter. I can be totally truthful about that. I mean, in, and it's quite likely that the ground will be frozen at that point, so that it complicates things even more. And the plow trucks and the snow banks. Yeah, I, I, We're not I, all of these concerns alone. I, I think this should either be done in the fall before the frost comes, or the first of January, or before the asphalt plants close, <coughs> or it should be put off until, yep. say, March. Well, it can, what if we table this and have them go back? It's a good idea. We can continue. Continue it. Yeah. Table if, 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 I mean, if I may, I was speaking with Mark. Um, I know there was concern um, in regards to vernal pool season and the migrations of uh, the big night because uh, I know there aren't any within 100, 200 feet of the project area, but you know, were there to be, we have inlet protections and BMPs, but I know he, um, typically with past projects um, for National Grid, he's wanted that to occur um, prior to. That, that migration event. So once we get into March, I, that might be a concern depending on the weather. So. Well, the other issue is even though technically your a lot of your work is outside of jurisdiction, a lot of um, given the terrain up there, you get rains. It's all going to run off to the low points. That's where your, exactly. you know, your your uh, vernal pools and all the other good things that we're trying to protect are located. Guys, just letting you know. So this is. I know. Question. Okay. And that other little one. I'm intimately. Yes, assuming. I know you are, but I'm. I'm Maybe really they could not. coal patch it. I don't know, but I just. I, can they coal patch at that time of year? They yeah, they yeah. can coal patch. They can't. It's the coal patch doesn't last. It doesn't last no, at all. No, I know. Especially with you know. With winter. Frost and winter. Winter. But as far as impacts to your jurisdiction, I don't really, yeah, given all. the area, I don't. It's very heavily vegetated around those pools. I don't think there's going to be significant runoff in that. Well, maybe they could now, go now. whether or not there's runoff on the roads, I, there right. could be. Um, well, maybe they could go now while the ground's still soft and, and put some, you know, some kind of um, erosion protection now in those sensitive areas so that if they don't get them, and the only thing is, see, snow plows will just wipe them out. Mm -hmm. No, I, I understand the concerns. I just want you guys to have a better idea of what you're looking at and where they are. Are we making this decision based on the impact on the well, our, system, our wetlands? Yes. Mm -hmm. And although some will be coming down. Yeah, it's not, you're not going to, I don't believe you're going to get a significant amount of erosion into those wetland areas. Okay, if you're comfortable. 
And if Mark it is, you believe me, down. somebody will rat you out. So it doesn't, you know. Yeah, they will. And I don't think well, Mark would any, let anything happen to the vermal poles. Yes, Mark will be not your friend anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you can on my good side. Staff's going to stand by the recommendation. Okay. Do we had a, a motion and a second. Is that correct? Yes, we did. Okay. So, any other discussion? Public, any discussion? Questions, comments? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. No. <coughs> you you get that? just have to be that one, don't you? I certainly do. <laughs> did you get that, Susie? Yep. Okay. Old man, grumpy old time. man factor. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. No, Next up is Peter West, 42 oh, right. East Harbor Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to reconfigure the existing dock 90 degrees, extend the ramp five <laughs> feet, and to remove an unpermitted finger Perfect. walkway. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The uh, staff is recommending a negative two in the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Betsy and Mike. Any comments or questions from the commission? Thank you. Comments or questions? Comments or questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. <laughs> Abstentions unanimous, so moved. All right, next up is request for a hearing under notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. Good evening, Mike. Uh, up, okay, so Jeff I'm and Shannon Conway, 5 Ottawa Lane, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to remove the remains of existing dock and to install an aluminum dock consisting of two. Six on? foot by eight yeah, foot as the T section oh, no. and a four foot by 20 foot walkway section to remove the top section of the existing retaining wall to flush with uh, to flush with grade and associated clearing and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just to let you know, um, Kristen just recused herself. Yes, I think okay. she was going to do that. Okay. Yep. Okay. And I'll save any of my comments until after Mike's presentation. Michael. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. For the record, my name is Michael Borselli from Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant, Shannon and Jeff Conway, the property owners at 5 on Orlean. Uh, I think you're familiar with this property. There have been a couple of applications on it. There uh, were some recent amendments to an order of conditions for some landscape improvements. Uh, this isn't an amendment. This is a formal notice of intent uh, to do some other activities on the property. Namely, we're asking for permission to install a uh, seasonal recreational dock system on the waterfront of Oyster Pond. Oyster, the property has frontage on Oyster Pond and on a private road called Ottawa Lane and also a private road called Quonset Road. So we have land under a salt pond. We have a, uh, a fringe of bordering vegetated wetland. And we have land subject to coastal storm flowage, that being a AE zone with a base flood elevation of 13. There's an existing single family dwelling with landscaping features. You may recall, or if you've been to the site, you also were very much aware of a new house that's being constructed next door uh, that you permitted, uh, received an order of conditions. So the Conways own both properties, and they um, are anxious to try to use the pond for kayaks, a canoe perhaps. They have young children, just so they can gain better access to the pond. There was a dock here at one point. Uh, in fact, the remnants are still there. I think at the last amendment, I think a comment was made. I think it might have been Maury that made a comment about the old dock that's still there, it's actually submerged now. 
um, since my involvement with this property, probably since 06, I've watched the dock go from fairly rickety to very rickety to falling into the water. And the previous owners didn't take any steps to fix it, and they didn't take any steps to remove it. The new owners are anxious to pull out the old dock, and they're hopeful they can get permission to install this lightweight seasonal dock. This dock is uh, similar to one that you approved on Flax Pond in East Falmouth. It's, it's, although this is called Oyster Pond and there is a hydraulic connection, it seems for all intents and purposes it's like a freshwater pond. I know it's truly not, and I'm not a scientist, but um, there's little or no tide. I don't know if anyone would agree or disagree. I think, is it the Trunk River? That's uh, the hydraulic connection that um, is maintained, but not on a regular basis. So I've never really noticed the tide here. Um, so we're going by water depth only without really having any more water to uh, uh, design to. But the water depth based on annual high uh, water elevations that we've taken through the years is over four feet at the outer face of this small dock. The dock is proposed to be made out of aluminum so that it can be, uh, it's pre-manufactured and it can be installed in sections. The sections, there's a blow up actually over here, the sections are four foot wide and they come in eight foot lengths and they're connected together and they're connected to the bottom with uh, aluminum pipes. And then at the end, the T is two additional sections measuring uh, six foot wide instead of four by eight so that the T is 96 square feet, six by 16, which is less than the maximum allowed of 100 square feet. The dock will extend from the shoreline 22 feet out to get to the four feet of water. And it's designed to basically land on an existing set of granite steps that were built a long time ago to gain access to the water. If you look, there's a profile and the, the height of the dock has been designed to be like two feet above the water surface, which will land on one of the treads of the granite steps that exist today. Um, as in the other project that you approved on Flax Pond, in order to make it so that the disruption to the bottom is limited, we're proposing to put PVC sleeves um, in the bottom so that each year you can go back to the same place and there'll be um, you know, just maybe the, the one-time disruption to put those in and then each year you go back and they'll be, they'll be marked so that you can find them again, hopefully. Of course, the remnants will be removed. The second activity on the site is uh, to try to alleviate some safety concerns about an existing uh, stone retaining wall along the shoreline. If anyone's been to the site, you've noticed this wall, which is made out of stone and has been there for decades, I'm sure, is leaning. It's creeped over time, I, over years and years, but it's a little bit unsettling to see that angle of that wall, and, and uh, the owners are very concerned, but they're also, they also understand that uh, to try to rebuild that wall on the shoreline would be difficult at best because of the disruption of the wetland resources. So they're still considering that, but at the moment they're hoping that under this application that you'll allow them to remove the top sections that are above grade so that it would end up uh, just flush with the upland grade so that you take the top heavy part of the wall off, and that would be done with a mini excavator. It's a mortared wall, um, and, you, and you could take a mini excavator with a thumb, and you could pluck 
from the upland, you could pluck the wall, uh, rocks off the top so that it's just flush and the remaining part of the wall, still leaning but not as top heavy, would, would remain until we can come up with a different solution. Um, but since we were before you for the dock, we thought we'd ask if we could do that at the same time. And that's this basically sums up the application, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Uh, Mike, is there any other material you can use other than aluminum to make it just less um, harsh on the landscape? Yeah, for we, lack could, of we could use better. timber. In fact, um, we, consider, we were considering timber after I filed the application. Um, the I like the sleeves. That was one of my notes. Yeah. I was going to ask you to install the sleeves, but if if you could look at maybe a different We've actually material. been talking to the builder, uh, Ralph Cattell is the builder of the house and he's sort of going to be the main, uh, property manager ongoing with the property, so he'd be the one that would be, his crew would be uh, hauling and storing it in the off season. Um, so we would be certainly open to using timber instead. We could use you know, non-CCA timbers instead. Mm -hmm. I just have heard some concerns about just mm -hmm. the use of an aluminum dock and sure. just a pristine pond sure. and from an aesthetic value. I just sure, I can understand that. Yeah. They'd certainly be open for that. Okay. That's it for right now. And then the sleeves would, you know, I was going to ask that to be a condition. So they're not, they're putting it in the same place every year. Um, Mike, just out of curious, do you send this to the harbor master? Mm -hmm. I didn't, but I, last Wednesday night, he happened to be here, and I had a conversation while I was waiting my turn out in the hallway, and I asked him about this, and if he wanted to look at it, and he said he wasn't interested in looking at anything on Oyster Pond, and okay. um, I actually, I emailed him and copied you the next Yeah, um, I remember seeing yeah, something, so, thanked okay. thanked him for taking a few minutes and sort of said what he said, which was okay. that he didn't need to see. Okay, excellent. No, I, I do remember that. I think I might have forwarded it to be put in the file, but if not, I'll make sure that's in the record. Uh, excellent. If you could just give me a copy, it just saves me a step tomorrow. I don't know. Okay. That's a different email. No. Okay. Uh, that's it for right now, Mr. Chairman. Jamie. I think those sleeves are realistic. Well, they, they did it on the uh, Brady application and Flax Pond. I haven't heard anything negative. I'm How long ago was that? I wasn't involved. So. Uh, like a year ago. Um, a little bit over a year ago. They just put it in the season. I'm a little concerned with, uh, if we're going to go to timber, we'll probably use 4 by 4s instead of a, uh, an aluminum pipe. So square peg doesn't fit in a round hole. So um, as an alternative, they'll probably just land on the mud and, and just, you know, Sit on the bottom. What we're trying to do Couldn't you is use a bigger PVC. We could. We could. I'd have to come. I could. I could come up with a solution and send you like a, a detail or a revision of how we would do that. Yeah. I mean, even if you had the four, you could get a pretty wide PVC pipe and just anchor it down there. Mm -hmm. And just so they're not, this thing is not shifting all over the place. That's why I wonder about the sleeves. I mean, sure. I, I've seen the pipes put in even with timber docks mm -hmm. that. And they just put them in, you know, they vacuum them in, but I've just never seen the sleeves. Yeah. How successful we've used it on a couple of different ponds, John's Pond and Mashpee, um, which has the infamous Tidewater Mucket, which is a freshwater mussel. Um, DMF has wanted us to use it, and it's it's worked. Okay. So we could use the aluminum uprights, and then everything else could be timber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I. Would. Thank you. I'm good. Okay. Mary. Yeah. Um, I did go to the site and I saw the wall. I can certainly understand why they're concerned about that wall. Um, and my memory's correct. There's a there's a paved walkway right behind the wall, or is that not the case? It's just wondering about what it's going to take to get into that location. There's a stone patio and it's highlighted here in gray. Yeah. There's another wall, uh, which is so they would come in with a mini excavator through here, and they, they would have to stop at this wall. Mm -hmm. But the, the boom on the excavator is long enough that it could reach over, and they 
So basically, they can access it from a paved surface yeah, be, there. They cross the lawn, there's the grass, and there's a, there's a new stone wall here, and they, they can do that. Yeah, okay. A um, couple other small, small things, I think. Um, this should have some BVW data sheets, and I'm wondering if those were submitted with one of the recent NOIs. So they would already be in the file. I would have assumed they were filed when we submitted our initial application. Um, I can, I Mike, can... we'll check on the five. We'll check on the previous application for five Anawa. Um, yeah, I. I think they were, but I mean, if it's... not, we'll get them from. You'll have it, to get them from Jack. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't appear to be in the file. Okay, I can get it. Okay, thanks. Um, another thing, this might be on the plan, and I just can't find it, but um, it should have the location of the off-season storage on the, mm -hmm. on the. Okay. Well, I can tell you, but I can also put it on the plan. It'll, it'll, it'll be stored in this oh. garage. Oh, okay. Or on the back side. So I'm happy to go uh, Write a letter, maybe, or put it on, you want to put it on the plan, I can do that. I mean, you do have a regulation that says that. Right, that's why I'm asking, of course. Okay. <laughs> um, and the last thing, um, since the materials have been decided on, this isn't um, possible yet, but do we need some inf information on light penetration or, or not? I'm not too concerned with light penetration in this. Area. Let me double check one thing. Kind of blending this from your freshwater dock rigs and your coastal dock rigs. Yeah, rigs. right. Um, I think there is a light penetration I, requirement yeah, I think it in the freshwater rigs, but let me just I think it check. applies to everything. I mean, there's no salt, there's no um, the salt marsh that I'm concerned rice. with. Right. Um, it's not a bad idea, in fact. I it's an excellent idea. We're going to do it with timber. There's no reason not to. Right. It it's one thing, it'll do, it'll do a couple things. It'll make it lighter. Mm -hmm. um, and it's skid resistant. That's sort of a secondary benefit to it. you got little kids running on, like, wood in the morning with wet yeah. and foam there in the water. So it's skid resistant, too. So. Yep, 50% open area, Mike. So. Yeah, no we problem. can do that. Make that a condition. Okay, and the last thing, it's not about the project, but now that the dock is completely sunk in, there's Can we remove little the sheets dock? of artificial grass floating around in there, and it would be nice to have them take that out. It's certainly a really reasonable condition. Remove. <laughs> I am all set for Mike, this is from uh, Division of Marine Fisheries. Did you see their letter? Yes. So, um, how are you going to get the sleeves put in there? They're concerned about well, jetting and turbidity. Well, um, there's no denying, like, the first six inches or so that they'll be jetted, but then they'll be, oh, they can be, like, uh, they can be pounded. They okay. just need to get in, in, like, 12 feet. The substrate's not really that tough, so I can't I can't say that there won't be um, some very temporary turbidity when you when you just started with the jetting. And we're talking about um, talking about three, six, four, six, six. There's only six. Okay, but the other, the other side of that was if there's going to be any provision at the time of year restriction. So no, no silt producing work from April 1st to June 15th. Yeah, so that should be a condition. And um, motorboats aren't allowed here. Is that correct? I think there's a prohibition, but there's no intention. Okay. So it could be a condition if you're worried about that. Um, there's no intention. Okay. Any more. I, I'm not certain, but I think 
under the town bylaws, there's maybe not an outright prohibition, but there's a limit on that. Well, it's, yeah, and it has to be an electric. Electric. Five or less, and it has to be an electric motor. But Mike. Um, in your narrative, there is words that say, um, so the sections can be removed. I think you'll see words that say the sections will be removed, if that doesn't, is that anything? You go in the order. Yeah, I go in you the mean order. you want it removed in the off-season? Yeah. 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 I mean, you said you, they can. I'm asking, will. Yeah. You're saying they must be. I must be, yeah, that's fine. Well, it's kind of weird. That's fine. Um, okay. I've, we've advised because of ICE, you can have ICE. Yeah, exactly. They should, they will. We don't, awesome. need, we don't need the, the, the object floating around on the ice. And, sure. uh, and that's my only comment. All right. Well, it's a great improvement over the sinking, deteriorating dock. Um, the ducks the might not be floating. as happy with the artificial turf floating. floating. Um, and I think the wall, I looked at the wall thing, and I'm really not concerned because I think in their other notice, they're going to be redoing that whole patio area anyway, so it'll, I'm sure they'll do it all together. But I did have one question, Mike. On, your, uh, on the <coughs> plan, you say there are two 6 by 8 aluminum walkway sections. Yes. And they're showing that's pointing at the float, and the float is eight by sixteen by the sh by you showing them on, which would be two eight by eight sections, which brings it to a hundred and that's not the square footage you stated. I think it's more. I think it's one hundred and twenty-eight square feet. But in your narrative, your narrative says. Just a minute. I think your narrative was correct. Your narrative says. The area of the T is 96 square feet, which would be 8 by 6, uh, six by 16. Yes. But it isn't on your visual plan. Well, I went to Berlin High and math. A little dyslexic <laughs> there, huh? <laughs> I can tell you what the intention was. I understand you have a limitation of uh, 100 square feet. Yes. Um, yes. The intention was to have a limitation is that <laughs> And this is a typo, I guess. Yeah, it's the eight foot's a typo. That, these are supposed to be six by eight. 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 So if I do that, that means the overall six by eight. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, six. right. So just the eight foot on the end of that yes. dock is just that's wrong. A, that's a mistake. It's a mistake. Um, I'll fire that grass in the wild. And then there's that, <laughs> just that, the. Um, I assume you did it, so it's okay. Yeah. The 15 inch tree. Mike, can you just get a revised plan to me? The 15-inch tree that's really close to where you're going to be working, um, it's actually right at the bottom of those granite steps. Mm -hmm. And your new uh, ramp is going to be going along that. Just to make sure, I think that you know, you're know you not going to have any posts in there, so you're not going to be driving next to the roots. But um, if there is going to be an issue, just to make sure they come and ask if they have to take that tree down for the the dock and not just take it down and then ask for forgiveness if it if it does have to be taken yeah, down no intention if, uh, you can make it a condition and um, that it's protected we will i mean i'll put uh, i'll writing it down yeah written permission to way, take down no or float. protect um, there's no flow it's all fixed i'm sorry fixed yeah. that's what i meant i'm sorry i take that back um the other um i did like the sleeve idea and it, i've seen it used um, usually, though, when you put the cap on it over the winter, it's a real pain to get yeah. it off. Yeah. Um, real pain. So I, you know, I'm, if you maybe could come up with a some kind of different design, maybe two different materials, so that, you know, it, you're not fighting with it. You're not fighting. Yeah, it's bad. I've done it, and um, then they get yeah. down there and they start standing there and beating it off, and then there's a it's lot of problems. Water. It can be, uh, it can be submerged. Yeah. But uh, it is a, it's a good idea, um, as long as the ice doesn't push it and lift it and that sort of thing, and, you know, that it's down deep enough. Um, but other than that, I, and I like the wood idea and the light penetration. So all in all, it's an improvement. Thank you. Oh, one last question on page A1. Why did you get in touch with the Mashby Wetland Protection Bylaw? <laughs> Was that your schooling, too? <laughs> 
I'm going to, that's I cool. I'm not going to send my kid. You're exposing my trade secrets of using older documents and then just words. Okay, well, they get on the, on the, yeah, all right. Uh, oh, I thought, now why would we want Mashby? Like, is there some, like an ACEC thing here or whatever? Okay, just a. You were just trying to point out I missed this. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. I just. I thought I was missing something, and I almost wasn't going to bring it up, thinking no. that she I was. Trusted. She trusted stupid. you. She thought you'd learn something. Yeah. Okay. Nah, thank she's, you. She's poking. I see. I do. I do read these. <laughs> yeah, Mike. You got to have a copy editor on your staff. Yeah. Um, it's an old document. You match have you? Uh, you know. I want to go to that wall for a minute. Um, I know your intention is down the road to fix, the, do stuff later on behind it. But have you um, had a structural engineer look at that wall and determine if there's a fix for it? No, I've, I've recommended it, and it just has not been a focus. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me you're going to be there do, rebuilding this dock. You're taking, t what, two feet off the top of the, do de the wall? So you're, you're, you're going to have a machine down there digging around. Why not kill all the birds with one stick? So if there's a structural fix, which probably might be ingeniously done from behind the wall, while they're digging around, this is the time to do it, not why, why reopen all that, you know. The um, problem is I, I've, I haven't been able to get a structural engineer to really, uh, there's only like three structural engineers on the gate, and I, I can't get one to That being said, we want to go forward with the permitting on the rest of this, and you know we don't want to delay. There's a lengthy permitting process for a dog. You, to, you alluded to it. You alluded no, to I, it. Yeah, I understood. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm just thinking, this is a much, this is an efficient way to tackle this whole thing. Um, right. And you know it. In the end, it might save the homeowner some money because you not be in and up doing work twice. Right. Well, if you were to issue an order of conditions, they have three years to do the work. You know, um, it's going to take at least a year to get the permit in for the dock by the time you get through Chapter 91 of the Board of Selectmen. And in the interim, we probably, I am going to be continually talking with them about a more permanent fix. So we have enough. Chances are um, they should be getting there and plucking that part off if they've got in the conditions. That doesn't. That's. There's really no disruption to the ground surface to do that. It's just it's just plucking off the rocks flush with the ground. So yeah, but he's no got big, his machine there. Right. He's sitting out in an area. Oh, where I know, but there's machines next. The the cost of mobilizing that mini excavator is really not. Significant in the big picture, to the point to delay, at least from my client's point of view, delay the rest of the project where we come up with a fix. No, I'm not necessarily proposing to delay it. I'm just saying, I think that you know it makes sense to do the structural repairs now rather than wait mm -hmm. while you've got all those got forces there. Right. And. You know, when it comes time to condition that, I'm, I'm going to push to have, set, have that written in as an inspiration to you and your homeowner to get a structural guy in there ASAP. Sure, I understand. I'm done. That's it. I, I have two questions, Mike. Mm -hmm. I hate to go back to the wall. But what are you going to do with the rocks that you pluck off the wall? Throw them in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Just knock them into the water. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was being brash. <laughs> That's why I was being brash. They're going to put them on a truck. Throw them I want to take them away. Yeah, yes. The site contractor yeah. uh, is Tavares. Okay. And they build walls. All the in fact, they probably. I think they should really think they were going to. The, there's going to be some walls built and that were approved next door. They may just be. Oh, them. they may just be. They might just stockpile them on that site and use them on those walls. <laughs> okay. Recycle. Um, my other question is, and it gets back to the posts again and the jetting. Mm -hmm. So, exactly how is that going to be done? 
I mean, this isn't a place where you're going to have a barge. No, they, well, they'll have a mini work platform mm -hmm. that they'll just float in. Um, and they'll from be, where? Uh, from where? Um, they, it'd probably just be Launch it from the side. Um, small yeah. enough yeah. that, it, it, from that side. it'll probably be carried down, or they'll work from a small boat. They'll have a compressor on land, mm -hmm. and they'll run a hose over and they'll do the jetting on land. There'll be no compressor. There's no need to have a barge. It's so close to shore, they'll just run the compressor hose. And then how do they pound after that? Well, they have a tripod that has a weight on it. So the same thing. They put it's the tripod on it. Yeah. yeah. All right. OK. Mike, we, we got a complaint, and I went down there, that there was pruning and somebody had been doing some trimming along the bank on the water side of that wall. And it appeared to me that there had been quite a bit done. Yes, well, there's an order of conditions that allows that. Well, I well, didn't see. I mean, that, I, I remember this from the original mm -hmm. when, we, when we started this, way back when the pond was there. This whole thing. Yeah, and we had this big pond in the middle. And I don't remember, and I couldn't find it in the orders, that that much, I mean, that was pretty vegetated along there. And it, it's cleaned out now. It was really cleaned out. I can't speak to the methodology, but I can tell you I know that Blue Flex Design was there doing this. And I think I, I'd be very much surprised if they didn't do it in accordance with the methodology that was outlined on the plan to you folks and approved. But I'm, I think we. It just looked a lot more yeah, than what yeah, I remember. I'd, I'd be amazed. And I if, looked at uh, the orders and I'd be I amazed if Teresa Sprague did anything that wasn't, you know, like in keeping with the methodology. But, but she's been the only one down there, you're saying. Mm -hmm. Nobody else has. To, to my knowledge, yes. That's but what that I was being wondering. said, um, I'm happy, to have, too. I'm happy to have, I'll report that to her, and maybe, this came up at an amendment yes, two it weeks did. ago, too. Yeah. Um, in fact, your new member, um, maybe that's why she got on the commission, um, <laughs> brought it up in the audience, uh, as an audience, from the audience. Uh, we'll but I remember yeah. before that even happened, oh, okay. before I had gone, we had gotten a complaint about it and went down and took a look at it. Well, what, what I can do is call Teresa Sprague and Jen. have her talk to Jen and meet at on site and go over this. We can go over it. Yes, Teresa, go over the site. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. I would do that. That's yeah. where they have it. Because be I, I know we had this discussion with the big pipe. Remember that it is a drainage pipe that nobody really knows what it's doing? <laughs> and you said you're going to figure it out. Um, but I, I had not been on the first hearing, but I was on the amendment. Mm -hmm. yes. And I, that was my first concern. I think it was the first hearing I went to. And that was my first concern was um, that there was a lot of excessive cutting down there. Not that there, I could see vines were pulled from trees, it was necessary, but there was a lot of cutting right, um, I guess it would, it would be to the, um, the, the, yeah, the east of that, that. The yeah, the east side. of the dock, and um, it was quite substantial, and I, if Blue Flax had a plan, and you can compare it to the plan that was approved, and then there's more cutting, because the stumps were all there, they're very visible. Um, and that was your, I think your defense, la not your defense, but your, your comment last time is that they had a permit, but I think it maybe has to have a, more, and, you know, somebody go down and, and look sure. at it. And some of it looks pretty fresh to me, Mike. I mean, you know, you could tell the stumps that had been cut, you know, a while ago. Yeah. You know, and then some of it still bleeds the sap, and it's like, well. Well, then the way, the way to solve that is to just go to the site with Teresa, and if there's things she didn't do, she'll say, I didn't do that, and then we have an issue. Right. I don't, I'm not an expert on that, or I, I didn't participate in that, or uh, I didn't focus on that um, sure. when I was doing this, but yeah. I'm going to call her first thing in the morning yeah. and have her call, call Jen. That would be great. Good. And maybe the dog. Maybe you and you and and the property at the same time. The other property at the same time? Yeah. The, the, the oh, yeah. Yeah, there was the, the same I thing. I thought this was what we had decided the last time this came up. Mm -hmm. There was going to be a field trip out there with Teresa. 
I don't remember that. Uh, but that, yeah, that was the well, it's actually good now because now that most of the deciduous trees have shed, it's easy to get down there and see the stump. So maybe yeah, yeah. this would be better. So you call Teresa. I'll call her. Last meeting, I thought. I did, I'm not throwing one Jen on the bus, but I thought that she was going to call Teresa. I will definitely call Teresa tomorrow and have her call Jen. And make, make me, uh, I think that would be the easier way to think. She does busy enough. This right. is just, just ridiculous in there. Um, the other thing that I have an issue with, does this dock really have to be that big? Couldn't they replace it in what's there? I mean, if we're just talking kayaks, I mean, there's, there's plenty of area in the back to set up chairs and to look out over the pond. Uh, what's not, the, what's too big? The, 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 I don't the like float. the tea the, section the tea. of it. I mean, if, you, if we're just talking kayaks, does it have to be that big? That's, that's what I'm asking, you know? No, I don't, I guess, you know. You know, I, even if you went back to the original footprint, I would, I, you know, again, I'm just one member, but I just felt that it was a little much for you know, we're talking kayaks or skiff, I mean, we're, you know. So I think I'm hearing you, what if we didn't do the tea and we just did the skiff? That's what we had Yeah, I mean, I could, I guess I could live with another. So we wanted to make sure we got into a little bit of water depth. Yeah. No, I can see that, and I see the sound that you got on there. But to me, it was just a little. Well, if it's only a kayak dock, they don't draw any water. Right. Canoes and kayaks. Right. So I mean, it could be well, the could be existing skip. footprint. Well, skip doesn't draw any water either. Yeah. Depends on how heavy people are. Three feet? Yeah. Then they better get out of the boat. <laughs> so we can do that. Be careful. I, I, uh, I'll, I'll request a continuance. Uh, yeah, if you could do that. I just think that it would be a, a lot less, um, even, you know, visual impact to me if it was just that little, where it was before. That's all I got. Anyone else? I have a question. Sure. No, I'm not going to get too into trouble. Since Wendy's here, mm -hmm. and Wendy knows a lot about Worcester Pond, could you come up for a second, Wendy? Because I have a question. Sure. And it has I mean, I was planning. Oh. I didn't know if well, it was going to let her come up. Well, can you come up? Come up and she, I knew that's what they were here. Well, can, can she answer my Absolutely question? Absolutely, she can. Because I don't think Mike knows the answer to this question. Otherwise, I'd ask you, Mike. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Just, just identify yourself when we thank you. I'm Linda Slurman, Executive Director of Oyster Pond Environmental Trust. So my question is about the height of the pond. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a, unusually high right now. But the water, but it's it's controlled. It is controlled, isn't it, at Front River? Uh, yes. And my question is, who controls it? Um, we work with Chuck Martins and DPW, and we let them know when it's uh, plugged up. Sometimes some of the storms come in, and they, they blow in eel grass. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know Chuck talks to Jen <laughs> to work that out. Yeah. Um, but you, you see, yeah, there's boards in there, too, right? Yeah, there's boards, yeah. yeah. And Chuck deals with that. But right now, the, the weir and the, the boards and the weir, it's not the weir that's really controlling the height of the water is Trump River because um, the Frank Mighties, which as you know, we are doing the Frank Mighties yeah. on there, and they are so crowding in the river right now that the eelgrass is getting caught up in the Frank Mighties. Oh, so it's just plugging it all up. Yeah, so and we're trying to keep that open, but until those Frank Mighties are finally die off, it's going to be a problem. Hmm. Okay. That was my mm -hmm. Thanks, Any anything else from the commission, Jen? No. Yeah. Okay. Any anyone in the public, sir? Just come to the podium and give us your name. Sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on one second here, okay, Mr. Alexander? Can we get a motion to continue? And Jen, can you give us a date? Out. No, it's fine. Thank you. We're continuing it the ninth. December ninth. Yeah, four. 
Can you do that, Mike? Can you do March, December 9th? He wants to continue. Okay. Yeah. It would be December 9th. Okay. okay. At, at the request of the applicant, um, I make a motion to continue this for December 9th. So I'm going to second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second from the end. Okay. Uh, now, there you go. Oh. My name is Ken Alexander. I live at 101 uh, Kumloden. I live on the same cove as the, the property uh, that's being discussed tonight. And I've prepared uh, a document here that I'd like to go into the record that covers a number of the issues. And I organized it so we, we I could talk about the size and, and the doc specific. But since the chairman brought up the issue of clear cutting, I would ask you to go to page uh, page five of the handout, and I can show you exactly what's going to happen over there. So on page five, uh, that is actually my house right there, and it looks directly out on lot five and lot uh, and number eleven. As you, you can see from this picture, that is the vegetation that was. Uh, in the other part of the cove. The northern portion of this cove is natural. Um, there are no lawns. There are three houses along the cove that have not clear cut uh, and they have maintained the natural vegetation and protected the habitat. If you go to page six, it's, um, mm. and of course your, your uh, critter ink runs out just when you need it most. But that's another picture of what it used to look like. If you go to page seven, this is the destruction that we've been watching from our house for the last three months. And we watch clear cutting. They just come in unabashedly clear cut. Um, let me address the red circle to the left with the wall. Yeah, I know that was not in the uh, order conditions. And this was not the commission. I believe did not give permission for this clear cut. We watched them cut. We watched them probably uh, for herbicide. And um, so I had a talk with the blue fat flex, and uh, she said, "Oh, there was invasive invasive species." Now I know this cove. I kayak in it. Know what was growing there it was clever. Maybe a little bit of poison ivy. Poison ivy stays pretty low. The clethro was beautiful. It, it hung out over the pond. It was gorgeous. And they just cut it right down, right down to the ground. And uh, we had brought this to the commission's attention, and it continued. And what I have to have to say is, uh, as, uh, as this is my view is that apparently the invasive species started exactly where the rock wall started and ended at the other side, because the cutting was exactly in front of that wall. And we talked to a blue flag uh, back um, a week or two ago and pointed this out. And uh, she said, oh, no, they had permission to do this and uh, that they were going to replant there in October. Now, that didn't happen in October, and um, yesterday they had landscapers with leaf blowers clearing the area to make it look good. So I am under the impression that this is the way it's going to stay. This was clearing that was not permitted by the commission, and um, I didn't think the commission is getting a straight story, and I know, I know that I didn't get a straight story. The second circle on the right is another area that's been clear cut. Uh, it, th this picture doesn't show it as clearly, but again, there's clever. Beautiful. I mean, th this, this coastal area was beautiful just six months ago. Um, and you go to page eight. This is on the edge. Uh, this would be on the western edge of La, uh, uh, number 11, which is also owned by the, the Conways. And 
This is what's been recently done. If you go over there, you'll see fresh cut trees. You'll see logs that have been pushed down into the water. Um, there's destruction of habitat that is irreparable. And um, I, I, it's very disturbing that whatever the commission has allowed them to do, they have pushed it beyond boundaries. And, uh, and that's part of what I want to cover today. So I'll come back to this. We have lots of photos as it's been just, just disappears. Vegetation just disappears. So let me start with, uh, con uh, with the um, issue concerning the dock. Um, again, I'm at, on Coon Loden Drive. My property looks directly out on the northern coastal area of this cove, uh, which the, is, encompasses number five, Ottawa, and number 11, both of which are under uh, construction. And by the way, that area I'm showing you, you can't see that when you go and do inspections. You don't see this because it's on the other side of the wall. But we see it very clearly. Um, okay, I went through the application in great detail. I found an incredible number of errors, an incredible number of inconsistencies. And as someone who is going to be impacted by this dock, that's disturbing. Okay, and some of these things have been brought up by the commission, so but let me go over it. Okay, so in the narrative, there's one set of measurements on the plan. There's another. Um, uh, it's not exactly sure how far it's going to stick out, but it looks like it could stick out as much as 24 feet into this cove. Now remember, this cove is one of the few remaining coves that is still natural, and it's a small cove. So 24 feet out into the cove is a lot different than 24 feet out into the open area of Oyster Pond. Um, under the applicable performance standards, the project narrative mentions that the T will be 96 square feet in relationship to the maximum allowance of 100, as has already been discussed here, that the plans uh, are set up for an 8 by 16, which is 128 square feet. Now, I don't know how this, the walkway is included, but you know, that brings it up to 192 square feet. And I'm not sure of the regulations of how uh, the, 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 the two 8 foot sections that allow you to get to the T are included in this 100 square feet, but um, by my calculations, we're up to 192. And I would like clarification on that. So, uh, the chairman mentioned size. And I've taken the GIS maps and kind of laid out the, the dimensions of the proposed dock. And I would have to say it looks more like a proposed water sports center than a simple dock for, for kayaks. If there's room there for six 13-foot boats, um, I don't think that's necessary. I don't think it's, uh, uh, I don't know what their, the intention's there, but uh, you could put six 13-foot boats on this um, structure. Now, in the DEP, uh, DEP, Mass DEP Guide uh, to Permitting Docks, it states that docks may not exceed the minimum size necessary to achieve water-related purposes and cannot interfere with public rights to the water. The DEP also recommends a width of three feet and with plank, span, uh, plank spacings of three quarters of an inch to allow light. Um, most all of the, the, the docks on Oyster Pond are constructed of wood, not aluminum, and are, are smaller. Uh, and this, and again, this dock is inappropriately large relative to the small body of water in which it's proposed to be situated. I also have concern about storage and how and whether or not it, it's been stated this is a removable structure, but uh, as was brought up, there's nothing in the narrative that says that it will be removed. And if it is going to be removed, uh, removed I'm concerned about where it's going to be stored. I think uh, it was pointed out, but I, I couldn't see exactly where. I'm concerned we're going to look at these all winter as a stack of four large aluminum structures, um, and they're going to be stored right on the edge of the water. And 
if they're not stored there, I'm curious how much land is going to be cleared to make room for them. Uh, and will there be more clear cutting in order to, to accommodate? I, I, think, um, I, no, I, I think Mike did address, you know, he's going to come back to us, obviously, but yes. it sounds like it's going to end up being wood. And pretty much said that if anything is going there, it's going to be stored around the back of that garage. So back of the garage, yeah. Okay. So. Um, I am also curious as to if there's going to be clear cutting necessary to access this area in order to do the construction and to, re and to actually move these docks. You know, what, what impact on the vegetation will there be to remove these structures and move them to the uh, behind, behind the garage? Page three, um, I've tried to, to frame my comments in the context of the, the bylaws as I understand them, and I, I'm sure you understand them much more than I do. Um, um, in addition to the environmental impact, a dock this size will interfere with recreational boating activities. And I, I'm not trying to de deny anybody their dock. I, I, I'm not here to say no dock. I'm just saying. The way it's been um, is being presented is uh, a concern. Um, it, we see kayakers all the time coming in and coming up right along the coast. And the, the winds that come from Surf Drive don't make it into this cove, and that's why there's a lot of wildlife and a lot of birds. But it's also we have a lot of kayakers, and they go right around this cove. And um, I'm concerned that the size of 22 to 24 feet out in the water uh, that will impede that use. Um, I know you talked about moving to wood. I think that's great. I think aluminum is not compatible with its uh, surrounding environs, and it, the overall visibility would be ugly. Um, there's uh, four issues that have not been addressed uh, in this plan that I think are required under the bylaw, a description <coughs> of the lighting and electrical connections. Um, we're concerned that there's going to be lights out there, and there's going to be lights on at night, and uh, that these lights may, uh, can, all, can be distracting to birds, but it's also uh, distracting to the other neighbors. Um, the decking service shall not reduce normal ambient light to less than 50%. That's not been addressed in the boats. And it also says that there should be a, uh, in the plan, should show where the boats are going to be um, docked. So I do have concerns about how large this is and how many boats are going to be attached to it. And if, if that size is really necessary. Uh, I don't mean to hear too much in here, but um, let me continue. Um, the application, and, and I don't know. You know, it's going to go through many revisions, I assume, but I found um, Well, first of all, it was... Did, did, uh, did you address that already, Mike, about the Mashby thing? Yeah, it was a yeah, type. Yeah. yeah. It's just a type. Yeah. It'll be so fixed. Just a mm -hmm. um, I did notice that the notice of intent that was submitted to the Mass DEP specified this was for the construction of a new single-family home not a dock up here. I mean, that's, that's DEP issues, but um, the, the notice of intent do not specify the dock up here. The flag marking on the map specifies lo the location as a number of 11 on the plane. I, I think in the, in page seven. Um, no, it's page A3. Um, and I also would request that I'd be notified my property is within 100 feet of this construction, and I am the butter, but I was never notified. Um, Mr. Chairman, we know that all of is within 100 feet. The certified green cards are in your file. Yes. We received the certified abutters list from the assessor's office. It, it, it was in a, it's a, Mr. Alexander, I can address that. Um, it, we did go back and look when that was raised. Um, the assessing office hasn't caught up to when the property transactions took place, apparently. No, we, uh, we went and talked to them, and it was, it was changed in August. 
they don't have it on their certified list yet. Yeah. So that is something you will need to Can take up with the, um, I have it right here. Your, what was it, 101? Yes, it's, it's still under Richard Goody, I think. I but when we went into the office, they said it, as of August, it was listed under the Ken Alexander. But I mean, this is not a big point. This mm -hmm. is not a big issue. But I would like to be, please be notified, teacher. I notify, but the assessor say to notify. That's my obligation. And is there any, how does that work with a P.O. box as opposed to a street address? I notify the addresses provided from the certified voters list, which is the same addresses that the textbooks go to. That's my obligation. I, I, I can't, there's no way for me to know anything other than that. I, I'm just asking now that you know if, if I can be notified. Well, you don't need to be notified. We have, we have an open hearing. So notifications happen. Obviously, you know, you know it's tonight because you're here. It would have, what would happen, sir, is we would have to double check and make sure and really check the, um, assessors thing because that we do require them to get a certified and butters list from the assessors department so that really has to be changed at that level and this was dated october 15th of 2015. so i can make a note to try to look at that tomorrow and let them know yeah that's a distracting i don't make a big point yeah that. um there's one more point i'd like to make and I uh, just ask that you uh, bear with me on this. What I feel like I'm watching is the death of this code by a dozen notices of intent. And, and what most concern to me is that it has been considerable destruction to the coastal area facing the cove uh, uh, over the past few months. None of which seems to be have been permitted and, and um, it's like a systematic, systematic destruction of over about one third of this code. Um, as I pointed out in the beginning, there are areas that are just being clear cut and manicured that I do not believe um, are, are uh, permitted. Um, this code is a habitat for many birds, turtles, other animals, including great heron, kingfisher, water birds. Uh, we have osprey, painted turtles, snappers, frogs, and small herring in addition to fox and otters and all sorts of things. So uh, as we went over before, on page six and page seven, uh, on page uh, five and six, you can see basically uh, the, what it looked like. And uh, there's plethora growing all over along the, the water's edge. And, uh, but on page seven is, this is what I look out on, and I, I watch the workers as they just cut. And I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if there's, uh, you know, documentation that permits this or not. No, we're going to find Go out. Go ahead, Mike. Just to be clear, the pictures on page five and six. Those are on the are board. not the, 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 the property shown on picture. That's right. Oh. This is, um, All right, that's fine. if you were to sweep around the cove, that's, that's fine. I, I that's, that's, that's actually our property okay. right there. So when did you take these photographs? Do you know the time? Give me an idea. What September, time? October. Okay, so it's September, October. Okay. Uh, actually, and the one taken on page eight is pretty recent. So that's late October, probably? I have to find out, but probably. Um, it helps when the date's on them for, for yeah. the staff. Yes, and, and I, can get, I can get that to you. Um, yeah, I can see how that would be very helpful. So this is my point. The doc will require the additional destruction of natural vegetation and habitat. And I don't think this application should be considered in isolation. I would rather, I would rather see it a comprehensive application that covers the entire area of, of uh, coastal vege vegetation for both Lot 5 and Lot 11. I'm not sure if that's possible, uh, but what I'm seeing is applications to do individual things that are not, and there's no, no looking at the overall picture. And 
My deep concern is that by a string of separate, isolated notices of intent, this entire area of the code will end up being clear-cut and natural vegetation and habitat for dozens of species will be gone permanently and forever. And so I would just ask that the Commission take that into account. And uh, I thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Anyone else? Wendy. commented, this is deja vu all over again. And I think I recall sitting in this, in a meeting earlier, considering an earlier application on this property, um, or on these properties uh, for work of some sort. I think the pipe, the mysterious pipe was part of the subject matter of that. And I recall that somebody got up who lived on Cum Loden and showed us pictures of clear cutting and unauthorized activities. I don't know, I, call, I can't recall who it was. I don't believe it was you. Um, so, you know, I find all this rather disturbing, to be honest with you. And I think, I think we need to uh, have some sharp eyes. Take yeah, a, we'll go back over it, Courtney. We'll look at all of the applications that were. Uh, I, I, yeah. I think this. having Teresa. Hook I'll up meet with Teresa out there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am concerned about this. We're starting to hear too much of it, and and um, you know, and I and I, so it bears looking at. Okay. That's that's all I want to say. Mike, you have something else? Yeah, I did. Um, and as an example, uh, there have been a lot of accusations made by Anna Potter. And it seems as though Mr. Bird's taking them to heart. Um, I'm not taking them to heart, Mike. I'm just saying we've heard this before, and not well, by this particular butter. Well, I, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I think we need to look okay, at it. Time. Yeah, let's I have said it, and it doesn't seem to be sinking in, that there was permits to do activities. To the best of my knowledge, 
And the person that we're all throwing on the bus is not here to defend herself. My experience with Blue Flag's design, and I think with Jen and other people that have experienced Blue Flag's design, is such that they have the utmost integrity and professionalism. I am having Teresa Sprague at the December 9th meeting to defend herself, which is only fair. Um, it would have been nice to get a copy of that document, which I didn't know about. You can have one now if you like, Mike. I will take one when I leave. And, um, Mike, that document was just handed to us. I don't know. But typically, usually, when there's a document submitted by a body, they have a courtesy of giving it to the applicant. So I'll, I would appreciate it. Um, so there are a lot of things raised. Um, I think we already talked about 90% of it through the board's questions. Um, so I'm not going to. I do have to comment on a couple things. Um, I'm a human. Mashby, come on, right? But this, you know, now I'm making it. Now I'm making it. People, right people right. miss we things. Understand. We understand that, Mike. So, so it was Cutting made. It was, you know, great sport was made of it. So um, the flag on the locust map was criticized. It's a one inch equals two thousand scale. You can't really get it that accurate. But evidently, the uh, a butter knows where it is because he's here. I went to the wrong, but it wasn't your fault. It was my fault. Oh, good. So anyway, there's a lot of things brought up. We're, we're going to use the 50% sunlight penetration decking. Um, we're not going to dock 13 boats. We're only planning on docking 8 boats. No, there'll be no boats docked. All that's going to be at the dock is kayaks, canoes, small craft that are more than likely going to be dragged up on top of the walkway when they're not used, or dragged up onto the upland like everyone else does. Um, there was a suggestion that there'll be additional vegetation, a loss of vegetation as a result of them putting in the dock. That's just wrong. There's no vegetation that'll be all uh, cleared in any way to do this. I think I, can, I described where the dock would be stored. I will put it on the plan. Um, we, talk, we already talked about changing the size. Uh, tw 20 feet is about from me to Courtney. That's the length map uh, that we're talking about. Maybe even maybe even less, but it's not a large dock. Um, it's a small dock, so the family can gain access and maybe learn something about the environment because they can go and look in the water. And you know, uh, I don't think anyone has a problem with gaining access. I think it was the size. Yeah, I mean, anyway, with me, Mike, that's but that's my problem. Char characterizes this huge dock, and it's really a small, really a platform. Like you are probably going to have that time of year restriction bump back yeah, to March because Wendy is right. They do, the herring do uh, appear that there early. Chuck is always commenting on that. Very much so. willing to do that. Do people swim in Oyster Pond? Yeah. So the kids can swim off this. You know, they can fish. They can learn about the herring. You know, it's you know, it's not it's not something that's going to be you know impacted. Courtney. Yeah, Mike, um, I'm not, I'm not, and I don't believe the rest of the board is questioning um, Blue Fox's integrity here. No one's suggesting that she succeeded the work that's been done um, that was permanent. There has been concerns which require us to go out and look that the amount of cutting exceeded what was permitted. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet until we go out and look. Understood. And beyond that, we have no way of determining, other than taking Teresa's word for it, that she was the one, if there was cutting beyond that. You see? That's so, a good point. you know, her, we're not throwing anybody under any buses. I know you're even, not. Even I, wagons. I wasn't suggesting that. I think there was some accusatory language by an abutter. No, no, but I don't want it lumped onto this, okay? I, I think no. Teresa is pretty professional. She well, wouldn't she's going to meet with yeah, Jen, and, and we'll address it in that uh -huh. with the staff. I'm, I'm happy to uh, report to the continuance to the next. Okay. okay. At, the, at the request also, of the uh, did you have something to share? Okay. Hang on just one more. Yeah, we have a motion on the second on the table. It's been so long, I forgot. What's going on? I'm Susan Shepard, and I live in Culloden, and I'm, I'm uh, you, 
you've covered the points that, uh, in one way or another, that I came forward with. I just wanted to reiterate that I, and, and say I don't think you've come up with a new size for the dock, but the proposed size is way out of scale, even for the size of the cove. And um, I, I can attest utterly unrelated to anything Mr. Alexander said that yes, a lot of cutting has been done. And um, it is, it has been a wonderfully kind of protected wild small cove and um, it's, that wildness is disappearing. And the wildlife in Cumberland is amazing. Thank you. Wendy, one more time. Something new now? Well, I just, I, I know this has been beat to death, but I just do want to say I, I hope we get to the bottom of what's the cutting. Um, and I'm certainly very concerned if they have been dumping things into the pond. That is a big no-no. So um, I, I'm glad to hear there hopefully will be some kind of resolution as to what's been going on, because that is a really beautiful All right, anyone else in the public? No comment? Okay. Anybody else good here? It's time for the vote. I'm going to call for a vote on this um, to continue to December 9th. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Extension, unanimous, so this. You might grab this if you want. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Marianne Malloon, 187 Carriage Shop Road, East Falmouth, Mass., with permission to construct a 16 by 16 wood deck walkway to pump, fill, and abandon the existing cesspools, install a new Title V sewage disposal system, native mitigation plantings, and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. I'll save any of my comments until after Mr. Borsell's presentation. probably all familiar with this curve in Carrot Shop Road. It's sort of a very sharp here can turn and there's uh, water on both sides of it. It's almost, you're almost to the Wakoit end of Wakoit Carrot Shop, maybe a mile or so away from like the Wakoit post office. The Thelmuth Road and Gun Club land is surrounding it. The parcel's over an acre in size and it's Probably 75% of it is wooded. There's a modest single family dwelling here with a driveway, a pond adjacent to it. There's a, a stone wall along the edge of the driveway. It's been, this has been here since, I've been here since 1984. Um, and the Maloons have, uh, they use this property, they enjoy uh, the out, uh, summertime outside living and they're gonna use it more uh, year round and they uh, wanted to do some improvements. Uh, they first came to me because they had a failed cesspool. So we've submitted an application to you um, to fix the failed cesspool. The cesspool 
is located in this location. It's probably 30 feet from the wetland. Um, and they also wanted to see if we're going to apply to you to fix the cesspool, if we could also get permission to add a deck on the side of the house so that they can uh, use the house uh, easier in their retirement years by accessing it from the back door entrance and being able to do outside living on the deck instead of out, out in the yard. If you been to the site, it's a walkout style, so you have to, the, it's like a garage under, and they, they sit out here and they enjoy the pond. They, they want to, they're hoping that they can get permission to, to sit here and walk out here, and if they're in the yard, they gain access from, by some steps. So, those are the two activities proposed on the property. So, to fix the septic system, um, we're, we're try, we did our best to make it as environmentally uh, sensitive, I guess, or to, uh, to, to get it to be as compliant with environmental regulations as possible. So the new leaching field for the house will be located as far as possible, and luckily we're able to provide a 100-foot separation from the wetland edge to the leaching field. The plumbing ex exits the house right here, and it goes to directly to the cesspool. So our plan is to intercept that pipe in a septic tank that would be 50 feet back. Um, that meets the, meets the regulations as well. Uh, both uh, Title V, local Board of Health, and your regulations for siting of a, of a tank. You, you, recognize and allow other components of the septic system not to be 100 feet away. You require the leaching facility to be 100 feet away where possible. So I believe we're complying with that. The, the tank then is piped to a pump chamber. The topography rises up. If you've been to the site, you know that. Um, so there'd be a pipe that meanders through the woodland. Um, and pipes to a D-box that's up here. There'd be some regrading in and around this area that uh, thankfully is, is already kind of cleared because um, the Rod and Gun Club maintains a, a pathway for their utility poles. Uh, the Maloons have allowed them to install utility poles to their clubhouse across that area. So, if, if done properly, there's um, two trees that need to be removed to allow for equipment to get through the woodland. There'd be some understory briars that would be removed, and then this work would break through to the, to the cleared area, and the leaching field would be installed there, and the pipe would go in the same place that you'd gain access to do the leaching field. So I think we've done a, the best we can to minimize disruption, and I think the overall benefit to the new si system speaks to itself, uh, as opposed to the uh, old cesspool. There's no proposal to add bedrooms. There's no added living space. The only uh, proposed additions are, are the deck, which is shown in the lighter brown color of the existing houses and the darker brown color. So if you look at that aspect, it, of the project, it falls under your re redevelopment regs after we are 10.18. And the one that's most important is that any changes to expansions of the structure can't go closer than the closest point of the present primary structure. So we show a dimension from the corner of the house to the wetland at 43, and we designed the, d the deck to be 44 feet away. The deck 16 by 16. And then there's a access stairs and a walkway behind it. And it lends itself to the architecture. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't make sense to put it here because you wouldn't have approved, you wouldn't be able to approve it if it was closer to the wetland in the house. And we wouldn't have proposed it if it were closer to the wetland. Um, uh, we've summarized the um, 
in previous surface calculations on the mitigation notes. This is a simpler one, so I didn't do the shading exhibits. I usually do on more complicated ones, but we we outline um, <laughs> we outline the math for the mitigation requirement and. There's a correction I can already see that needs to be made to note one. The area is, in fact, 288 square feet of impervious uh, added surface. And a three multiplier would require you to have just over 1,000 square feet of mitigation. And we're proposing that. And it's shown in this dark green color. You're, you like to see it as close to the wetland resource as possible, so we're showing it in that area. Um, and we are proposing to use native plant material from your approved list. Uh, Mrs. Maloon wanted to uh, be able to work with staff to pick out things. Uh, she wanted to go and research the plant material. I gave her the plant list, and she's going to come up with some uh, plant species and uh, we're hoping you'll allow her to then meet uh, and work with Jen on the plant material. As long as they're aware that it's going to be woody shrubs, it's not going to be ground cover, it's not going to be perennials, it's not going to be grasses. Yeah, I already explained okay. that to her. I told I her. I do not want to have it. I told, um, I told her about that and Thanks. she's aware of that. Okay. I think that sums it up. Other than the typographical error I found on my plan, um, which I'll fix, um, I think everything that we're proposing meets your requirements. I did, I will note because it'll probably be um, raised um, that we are cutting two trees and typically you are looking for tree mitigation as well as uh, impervious surface addition mitigation for tree cutting. We didn't propose it. Um, we all, and, and there's also a provision that I'm notoriously forgetting about if you have more than a thousand square feet, you're supposed to also propose a tree if you're in excess of a thousand square feet. I didn't forget to do that. Or I, you, I am deliberately, <laughs> I deliberately did not propose any trees to see if it would be acceptable because I think it's uh, obvious on the site that this is very uh, much a wooded uh, property, and I don't know that if we added two, two or three small trees, it would it would really add much to the mitigation process. I think it's a vast improvement just to upgrade the septic. I know we have to update it, but it's a good thing that the septic's being upgraded. I think by adding the deck, you're, at, you're gaining buffer. Um, I know we have to do it, but it's still, I think the, the end result is that the applicant gets some uh, repaired septic, he gets an, um, they get an amenity, and then there's a enhancement of the buffer, which I think is how the regulations were designed to work. So hopefully we wouldn't we won't need to add any more trees, but if you require them, we will. And I'm happy to do Jen, do you want that? Uh, Mike, you here from Natural Heritage? No. They have 30 days. Yeah, we're going to have to get a continuance just for the Natural Heritage letter. Yeah, I understand. Okay. That's it, Jen? That's it. Just let me know about the trees. It's the board's pleasure. Okay. Cody. Yeah, on average, how deep is you going to put that force main on its way out there? I mean, I know you're, you're going up about a 10 foot. The force main is going to be uh, no, on, on average two, not deeper than two feet. Yeah. And there's a bleeder, uh, there's a bleeder valve, valve incorporated, so when the pump shuts off and the check valve shuts, there's still a, a bleeder that drains that out, so there's no issues with freezing. So it's going to be just deep enough to provide cover. So my question is, 
I assume you've given this some thought, showing this the root of this this um, horse mane kind of fishing its way between trees and stuff. So in doing that, there's no way this was the least um, destructive path that you could use. Yeah, in, in my opinion it was because it, uh, not only for the root of the uh, main, but that would also be the swath that the mini excavator would travel through, so it'd be, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be serve both purposes. No, I understood. Um, and through, and Jan, you don't, you're not wound up too much about whether or not he should put two trees in somewhere else. Oh no, I'm leaving you guys to discuss that. You okay. guys let me know what you want me to write in the decision and I will write it. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm kind of ambivalent but, I'm personally, but I just wanted to know. Okay, that's, that's all I have. Thanks, Courtney. Kristen? Oh, it looks good. I, I can see there's quite a few trees, so I can there see is. where it would be a problem to try and add more uh, mitigation. So that's all I have to say. Maury. Um, I had I had to agree with the tree thing. I was looking at our regs, but um, if that's the case, maybe we can get more woody um, vegetation to make up for the trees that you're not going to plant, um, which would be helpful where that near the driveway, maybe where the lawn is. I can understand the the not disturbing the stone blocks and all that. The one I did wonder about the driveway. Um, I wanted to go out there when it was raining, but it wasn't, and I just want to make sure that there's no overwash, Mike, on that wall over the riprap on the edge of the pavement where it says 21-6. Oh, you hear me? Yeah. No, I, my observations are that the grass, had, there's a little bit of a lip on the grass. And I haven't, uh, I, and if you look at the spark grades, uh, it, it, it runs this way. Right, and the buffer will make a big difference. The new mitigation you're going to put in will make yeah. a big difference. So yeah. that's a great improvement. Um, and I, I know I'm going to bring this up in, in um, discussion, so I just don't want to be a curveball for you. Um, that this won't, the lawn won't be grubbed out. The woody vegetation will be planted in the grass. Yeah, I guess that's the way you... Like yeah, we usually do, but I just so the applicant knows that they're not going to go out there and just, you know, sod cut everything, plant the plants and bark mulch it. Um, that it's going to be native all underneath there and grow up. Um, so just I'll explain so, it to yeah, them and, yep. and, and, and um, make it a condition. Yeah. Yes. And then the limit of work was um, you're going to move it obviously when you do your planting. Yeah. Okay. You, that's just basically so you can um, pump fill and abandon the old septic. Yeah. I never know if I should show two limits of work. I mean, I know. Well, you'll, they'll figure, maybe we'll put that in there just that once the, um, the. Might not be necessary if we're leaving the grass. Grass there. That's what I'm thinking. So I, and maybe even put the limit of work right along that. Um, and other than that, I think plant directly in lawn, in middle of planting, why is limit of work? That's it. And the upgrade for the septic is good because where that cesspool is, I am sure it was impacting that pond terribly. Yeah, unfortunately, that pond is starting to get overwhelmed by cat nine tails, and mm -hmm. it's converting to a wetland. That's what's called succession in ecology. Mm -hmm. Mike, um, if I when I stood at the stake at the northeast corner of the proposed uh, septic system and visually looked at the stake on the northeast, uh, southwest corner. That change in grade was at least five feet. I think the system, your, your topography is a little odd. I think, it's, I think that if that whole system was really a little north, you can avoid quite a bit of construction. I think if you go take a look at it, you'll see what I'm saying. Yeah, there is some regrading we're proposing, uh, Mr. Powers. I, I, I can I can yeah. see it, but I'm just looking on the existing grade. You're showing the north to be about two feet different. And I stood there and just looked at that stake. It was I oh, really? huh. so I'm, and I, if I it, standing there, I think you show the topography. I think you can see the swale where it's intended to be, mm, which okay. would cut down 
right. your education. So I don't want to tie you down to that specific area because I think everybody's better served, including us, by going north. Sure. But if you take a we'll look, look at, at it, yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. But we'll make sure it's 100 feet away. Okay? Yeah. All right. That's fine. Other that's than that, I think it's, mm -hmm. it's an improvement across the board. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mark. That's it. Well, I just want to start by saying what a beautiful spot in the fall. Thank you. It was very peaceful to be out, yeah. out there. Um, I was concerned the same as you, and I think in a really heavy rain, there might be overflow, which makes me happy to see all this mitigation mm -hmm. planning put in. Um, but are there any dry wells? I don't believe there the are any dry wells, are there? Like, no. a, like a French drain? I mean, for the roof runoff? Or run anything. Yeah, because roof runoff, it was a heavy rain, the roof pours onto that driveway also. Yeah, the pavement's your biggest. Yeah, I mean, it's a big, sur it's a big roof surface, yeah. Surface. Yeah, half of it goes in onto the driveway. But I'll, I'll just make that as a. Well, I mean, part of it. Gary M. Loom, 187 Carrot Shop Road. Um, I'm not sure if the. One of the gutters is in the garden area on the wall, the, built, the upper wall, so it pretty much goes into that garden there. There is some, there is a drain spout in the middle of the, garage, the two garages, and I think there was one at the other side. But, so, but it's taking the, that part of the roof and pouring it onto the driveway and then whatever is falling on the driveway. I, to be honest with you, I have never noticed it to go, like be overly saturated in that grass area between the driveway and the pond, that little strip. Um, it's never collected. We've never had ice problems. Well, I'm thinking um, like a bit, like when we had it. some of the big yeah, I, we've had I, it basically, it tends to run down the driveway. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's driveway is, like as you're driving in from the road, yeah, it, it kind of goes up, bit. so it, it tends yeah. to go that way, as opposed to into the direct pond. Yeah. But at any rate, having, if it were a problem, having the buffer plantings there right. will, yeah. be, will be helpful. Great. So, yeah. Now, if this nice is project. continued, if it's continued, so that means we won't hear anything, we, won't, we have to continue it to December 9th? Is that what you're saying? I'm just concerned yeah. I wanted to get it, the septic system in this fall. We can do it on the 18th, but we have to wait till um, natural, natural heritage. Yeah. We can't close it without natural heritage's comments. I know what natural heritage's comments are going to be, but we still can't close it without natural heritage. But we can comments. do it the 18th of this month. We can do 18. Okay. Right. Just, just so you know, natural heritage is a regulatory board and they have 30 days. Our timing's mm -hmm. off. DEP and right. National so Heritage might, are off. Okay. We, we can't push them. They take 30 days. Um, so that's the only reason. We and why are they being? Because you're, uh, you're in a priority and estimated habitat for rare species. You're in their jurisdiction. Okay. All right. Thank you. Basically, it's an open and close. You all said But we can't write an order to them. Yeah. You all said, Betsy? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Mayor. Thank you. Mike, I'm going to be picky as usual, but um, there's the question of BBW uh, data sheets again. Yep, I have. I, I don't think. Oh, that's, that's possible. I don't recall seeing them. But, mm, I don't recall seeing them. But no, then I'll, I will get some. The more interesting part of my comments um, not to pick on you about arithmetic but um, well, that's a Burlington high it's wrong you, you've got this figure of the uh, area the pro proposed deck of stairs is 360 and then the required mitigation you've got written out is three times 288 yes. and looking at the plan I think it's what you said is correct that the deck and stairs are actually the 288 not the 360 mm -hmm. no 
Well, the deck's 16 by 16. That's 256. 256. I'm yeah. trying to do my calculus. It is right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And the proposed walkway's on the 30 feet long. So, oh. So, I, so then the walkway's 4 foot wide by... Oh, 4 foot. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's 4 by that distance, so... Like 28, 29. Yeah, okay, so it should be 3 by times 360. Yeah, it's three okay. times 360. Because yeah. otherwise I was going to say the mitigation is only 864. I think it's going to be three times 288. That's what wow. you just said, which comes out to 864. Um, which, right, so I'm going to fix that. So, um, is there an, is but there I a, thought we were just saying that it's at the appropriate area is actually 360 square feet, not 288. That's what I thought. How did you come up with a difference? Well, the deck is 6 by 16, which is 256. Right. And then it's, it's 28 by like 4. 4 times 28. So that's almost still 10 That's about 100, 100 right 12. there. 100. Well, I'm going to calculate it precisely. Just, I have 360 uh, okay. times 3. Uh, and it's going to be a plot, uh, 3 factor. And then yes. we're going to consider increasing it a little. 330. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a good solution. That's the, that's I like that solution. And then I like the project. I think it's a, yeah. it's a great project. 1080. Yeah. The 1080. Yeah, right. Thanks. Jamie. I'm curious about the access for getting the tanks in there. Yeah. Well, the truck tanks will be delivered on the truck to the driveway. They'll be back. They can back right to this position. These will be excavated. And then the excavator will put them in the hole. That's why they're age 20. Um, mm -hmm. These um, will be delivered the same way, and the excavator will hoist them with a the chain and bring them up the hill and put them in there. You, can't you come down from the gulf, down that uh, utility? Uh, yeah. From up here? Sure. It's a long yeah. way. Well, that's part of my question. Is they're age 20? Why are they age 20? Because of that easement? Well, is they that age 20? They come age 20. They, they're the 500 gallon chambers. Um, um, come they age only 20. come age 20. That's yeah. the way they come. But they're still, I, I know from the local installers, they can carry them. They carry them with the excavator. The and the chain. Um, we hadn't considered going through the Rod and Gun Club. We could do that. We could get closer with the. Uh, the I'd have to leave it up to the installer because it's his methodology, but I know he can carry those with his excavator. The age 20s? Yes. It is very well. Those aren't tanks, don't forget. Those are those right are chambers. Those are fusers. They're four by eight and a half, and they're like three feet tall. Yeah. Is that oh. actually an electrical easement? There's no easement. It's, it's not an easement. No. Put them it's just no the record, and they disappear we, within all of There you go. It's just sort of a Good well. <laughs> uh, the kindness of your heart. Thank you. Yes, sir. Courtney. Uh, would it make sense, since you're going to be excavating for that tank, uh, to put whatever sauna tube for that deck, that corner of the deck, in at the same time? <clears throat> I know you. it would be a difficult thing to perhaps locate it ex precisely, but you certainly could pour a pad and maybe bring up an oversized um, footing up to within a couple of feet of grade while he's doing all that excavation, then you know that that deck is not going to set on set on something that's unsettled. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'll, it'll be on a big foot footing, I'm sure. I, mean, I, tip, I, I used to do it all the time when I couldn't pre pre light, light, pr precisely locate it. I'd make the a footing two foot by two foot. Bring it up, bring it up to within a couple of feet of grade, mm -hmm. and then just stick a sauna tube on top of it. Sure. Once you knew exactly where it was going to go. All right. Because yeah, the deck will be built afterwards. Right? Yeah. Right. So you can get a machine in to do the other one, and that's all going to be undisturbed. But that's all going to be disturbed, and knowing mm -hmm. the way excavators backfill those things, it'll settle all the time. Right. Anything else? Now, do we have do we have a motion? I'm gonna make a motion to continue. At the request of the applicant. Oh. November eighteenth. I'm, I'm gonna continue to the eighteenth. Second. Mike, bring the DVW DVW data sheets in. Okay. Yes, I have a note. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the commission? Anyone else from the public? Okay, here and no.
Now I'll call for the vote to continue to the 18th. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Attention, unanimous, so moved. Nice project. Easy night, huh, Mike? I'm taking that. No, it's it's really just proofreading. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Uh, consider that cost in word too. Cut and paste. That's the problem. All right. Okay, continued request for hearing under notice of intent. Jacqueline Holmes, 41 Co Street, East Fallon. For permission to install approximately 160 linear feet of core fiber rolls consisting of 20 foot rolls, 5 foot rolls deep along the shorefront shore area. Maintain pruning in the existing 50 foot wide vista, pruning corridor, and associated clearing, estimated grading, and landscaping. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we um, continued this so that the applicant, because it's a notice of intent, could seek permission from the property owner. Uh, well, we'll get written permission, and we did check with upstairs. Um, so that was done, and then you all should be looking at a plan dated, what is it, Jack, August 27th? I really hope you and I are looking at the same plan. I think we are, though. I'm blind, but I still think I see two little blocks down there. Yeah, yeah. 27. Wow. Okay, yeah. excellent. Um, and I do believe you took the, you shortened the length of the core fiber rolls? Mm -hmm. That is correct. And we removed the notes regarding Pilardi? Yes. Good man. You may. Oh, wait, I need to get the quorum for this, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Well, I think it's everybody well, except Christopher. Okay, everybody okay. except Christopher. Well, is anyway. The TV's gone. <laughs> I got to go through the protocol. For the record, my name is Jack Landers Colley. I'm a civil engineer in private practice. And with me tonight is Ken Bravo, who works with me. And he was at the Board of Selections meeting. So if there's a specific question you have, he can better answer it than I can. No. Um, Yes to all the questions that Jen said. We made it shorter. We removed the vista pruning on this side. We removed the notation about polarity. I spoke to um, Mrs. Holmes owns the property. I spoke to her son, who is the, is the lead person on this. And he agreed in concept that whatever the pruning characteristics that are permitted by the Conservation Commission, that is what they're asking that any mention about the polarity um, is not going to be discussed. On a footnote, though, I, I, I was away, and I was in a part of the world where they used polarity a lot, and I think I told Betsy that in the right application, it is actually quite nice. Okay. In the middle of a village in France. So, yes. I was going to say, um, you were in, yeah, you were in a well, village. Well, we just had the you were, the were not along a water body. Or on the outskirts. <laughs> but, um, no, I did. All the recommendations or mandates that were prescribed by the commission, we did undertake. Thank you, Jack. Um, and with some difficulty, just because of the irregularity of it, um, the Board of Selectmen did um, um, have a meeting. It's a matter of public record that they, it was heard, and we explained to them why we had to come before them, just because of the nature of the of the concert, um, the regulations that the Conservation Commission has to deal with. And at the end of the day, when back. this approval, I assume the approval comes, we then have to go back and get a license to do this work because it will be conducted partially on their property. Yep. That's the way they chose to handle it. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, if you go back eight years, eight years, they just sent us a letter saying, we give you permission to do what the Conservation Commission allowed. And in essence, they're saying the same thing. We're, ex we're, we're acknowledging that we you like guys are the experts. You, will, you approve something, and we're going to give them licensing of that something. Yep. So that's really the, the essence of it. So I'm hoping <coughs> this meeting will be a lot shorter than the meetings that just occurred. <laughs> um, and that if you have any questions, we I'll be happy to answer. <laughs>
Uh, we're just yes. getting Jim and I am glad to see the filarding was taken off. The original plan That's the one thing I did have a major concern issue with. Um, I never had a real um, any concerns about the biologs. I've been on that bank with Jack. It is. It does need to be done. And we will write the uh, order to uh, reference the pruning um, that's allowed in accordance with your regs. I make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advice. I'll second. second. Thank you. Um, we all seconded. Mike, give it to Mike. We'll give it to Mike this time. I get paid more, you know, when I make right. <laughs> well, Hey, we closed one tonight. Sounds good to me. Would this be closed? Would this be closed? I'm Just so you know, you get points when you make a motion. Meetings. or. Hang on a second. No, this, this meeting is actually closed. I just wanted to make a commentary about one of the other hearings that was this evening. No. A couple I, points. It, it, um, One is closed. Uh, we, uh, this is this isn't closed yet. No, those hearings are closed. closed. We haven't even voted yet. Vote your vote your closure of the hearing. You're getting muddled here. Any other comments from the commission? Okay. Comments from the public. Hearing none. I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so move. So Jack. your hearing is closed, Jack. Now, what did you want to address? Yeah. Um, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to comment that um, unless you have, generally land under the ocean is not owned by the town, but owned by the common. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's, 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 that's the first thing. Right. The second thing is the special permit process in the town of Falmouth was adopted sometime in the late 60s. And it was specifically for alteration of land form wetlands in particular. So that applicant that came before you that had the aerators, I, it's one of those things I don't really think it belongs with the selectmen. I, I think it belongs with the commission because it's not really altering the land form per se. Um, in the Commonwealth they, lands. They've been doing it for aquaculture projects. They've been doing, what's another one? Um, it's true, aquaculture. Upwellers. Where, uh, yeah. Nitrogen loading, you know, they, they have these exper uh, research yeah. experiments w with oysters um, filtering nitrogen, and the selectmen approve all those things. Being consistent more than anything. Well, yeah, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they trust you. But if the Water Quality well, Committee partnered with them, then they do. it's technically a town project or a partnership with a town project. Okay. okay. It is a common Thank you, Jack. Okay. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, it doesn't yeah. hurt at all. Hey, oh, yeah. we're going to yeah. pass that. <laughs> I know, I know we are, Jen. We're trying to move with you. <laughs> Request for an extension of existing orders and condition. 26 and 39 Juniper Point Road, Charles and Thomas Crane, DEP number 25-3882. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, they are requesting a one-year extension, and we are recommending that. So moved. Second. Second. Work started? Uh, I believe so, Courtney, but... Seconded. Did the work, has the work started? I believe so. Year. Okay. Huh. Okay. Any other extension. comments, questions from the commission? Comments, questions from the public? Hearing none, call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Extension, unanimous, so moved. Cheering on the other chair. 207 Meadowneck Road, Charles Jeffrey and Veronica Jordan, DEP number. 25-3888, Jen. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to have to apologize. I did not see the request for the extension on this one. I'd like to review it, so I'd ask the board to continue it to November 18th. That wall went in. I watched it go in, so I'm curious to see why they're they requesting a, a, another extension. So just continue it to the 18th and let me double check I that. I move to continue to the 18th. Second. And yes, Courtney, the wall went in. I watched it go in one whole time. Yeah, he just said so. Yeah. I was listening. To the 18th. So on November 18th, yeah. Yes, please. Okay. And that, just let me double check that. Is this the one that's... It's the very last house Yeah, we talked before. about the trees, something protecting the trees when the wall went in. Mm -hmm. Is it that? Mm, yeah, it's that big old stone wall that yeah. was built back in the 50s back, on McCoy yeah. Bay. 
Yeah. Um, they originally tried to secure that area with the with sand, and then all the sand got pushed up towards Hamilton Pond. Right. Um, they did put the vertical wall in. That was Cape Cod Docks. That was one of the first projects you saw with Cape Cod Docks um, to put that in. Yeah. It was like it was enormous, like 800 linear feet yeah, of that yeah. private beach on McCoy Bay. Beautiful. Beautiful out there. Yes. Yes, you did. Mike and Mike. Yes, we did. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other comments from the commission? Comments from the public. Hearing none, call for the vote to continue to November 18th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. Four orders and conditions. 560 Minot Road, Alphonse and Marie O'Neill White. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, this was the mo uh -huh. Sorry, <laughs> let me get that for <laughs> uh, Jamie, Mary, Betsy, Russ, Mike, Maury, Chris, and Courtney, everybody. Uh, that you heard last week. It was the invasive removal. Um, Redo the deck. Redo the drive line. Yep. Oh, it was mentioned that they were going to just do. Oh, and the plans, they needed to put to show the, the uh, buffer yeah, zones. Yeah, they're going to get the new plans for the buffer zones right. that came out in A and B buffer zones to the coastal beach, the tree removal versus the tree added, A zone. A, Zone A from the salt marsh also needed to be on the plan. Oh, yeah. And there, the table outlining the reduction of 400 square feet of impervious surface. Okay. And they have not submitted that stuff at this point? I, I believe it sounds to correct. And okay. if not, I will require it. will be written into the order. And then we were also going to make sure that they gave us the size of the plants. Remember, she only had the, the, the mature size. Remember, I, I just had it on a note. She does have the size in the planting plan, but I will reference that. She has number three, number two, so. And we're going to be putting our own, it, it's all going to be basically three, two to three gallon. Okay. Then we always reference that. But it yeah. says it on, like, page 16 of the okay. notice. Notice, yeah. yeah. We can, um. Uh, Plan, and then I'll just put a note to reference the spacing sizes in the notice of intent. I move that we approve this discussed. Second. Yes, Mike. How Did you want the uh, memo on the structural engineer, Mike? Yes. Because I have that reference size spacing in notice and NOI and um, memo structural. Mike, death. Got it. Yeah, he wants a structural engineer to look at the deck because it's based velocity. We're, we're pretty consistent about not putting structures in a velocity zone. And, uh, nope, that's what, fine. What we're doing, and I want to be sure that dock is tied down, deck, deck is, is tied, tied down. Deck is tied down. Yeah. Okay. You know, at least we're getting some benefit out of the expansion. That whole structure will be better. I have, I have a question on that, Mr. Chairman. If there's some sort of fire, like gas fire pit going in there, mm -hmm. is that going to be allowed? From like a building code or a plumbing thing, so if the gas code goes, it would be fine. Oh, okay. It's outdoors. Okay, I was just curious from a like from a velocity zone standpoint. I didn't know. velocity zone standpoint. I did not know what. Propane. Yeah, if it would met code. Tank? Well, that gets a little, that gets a little different now because then it has to be attached and secured depending on the size, how many gallons. Yeah. There's a whole big deal on that. If it's natural, then it's coming street gas. So. It could just be a straight up fire pit in that the, deck too. Uh, I don't. Know. Road? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have a motion to approve as discussed in the second. Any other discussion from the commission? 
Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions, and so moved. 41 Hamlin Point Road. Peter and Ronald. That one had to be Wait, no, that one It's everybody but me. Uh, yeah, everybody but um, Mary. 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 I can't leave Mary. No, I. I <laughs> <laughs> bet she got to skate out last time. All right, this was the, the deck, Jen. This is the, the deck and the spa on the side of the house where there was an order of conditions that had the limited work somewhere. Then they got, then they got a second order of conditions in 88, but somewhere between 1994 and 1998. They had cleared, then they got permission to put a pool in that area. And now they're just basically restoring everything. What the, the, the crux, what I was trying to get at is, will the board allow the area that was disturbed between 94 and 98 to be used, to be allowed to be used as mitigation? Um, instead of, uh, or do they need to find other point? I think, I think it's improving it. taken off. What? No, I know. I'm, I'm getting to that. So I think that, um, I like the plan. I think it's a benefit to what's out there. I know a few of you have some issues with the driving capabilities of the kids. <laughs> and the trees can remain. I'm pretty sh I pretty much saw your representatives on this project right after this hearing and informed them that the trees were most likely going to stay. So. If you want to keep the trees that they want to remove down the driveway, that's fine. They're, they're expecting that. Um, this, this is an area that is going to be much better off once this project is done. Absolutely. Than had it not been done. Right. And you're, well, you're not on it. But it's absolutely true that the deck's not, not useful as it is now. It's useless. And they're going to make a deck that can be used. Right. So, Presumably people will use it and not, and not want to get out. All the vegetation right. I just had one question um, when we were discussing it with Jen, the creeping juniper. Yes. Were we going to remove that? We can't. Creeping juniper yeah. gone. And again, I did bring up, so it's not new information, was the, um, the erosion from the irrigation. That irrigation, the, the uh, rotary nozzle irrigation has to go and only drip irrigation on these things. Um, temporary drip. Temporary drip. And even, you know, even temporary, I mean, even if it's long term and it keeps the health of the plants, it's better than, you know, taking the drip away and then they're out there watering it anyway because drip irrigation with the diffusers is so minimal use and it does preserve, keep them going. But the bark mulch, as I was saying at that last one, I'm sure some of you people have all seen all the buffers, and when we have mitigation planting, the first thing they do is they take all the sod off or whatever, then they plant the plants, and what happens is forever, that bayberry, which is a rhizome shooting plant that would just all fill in beautiful like a real natural buffer, they keep it a perfect little plant with a perfect little mulch and everything around it. Oh. So I would recommend that this gets maybe seeded with a fescue and the plants in it so that it does start to have a holding power and they won't go down in there and muck around and rip out every little suckling that comes up to, that will infit. And eventually the grass dies out. And then you just have a beautiful buffer without weeds and herbicides and, and ripping out the suckling. So. That was another thing you mentioned about having, having uh, a fence between. The fence between, and the buffer. Yeah. And then they don't mow it single, down. Single, single rail. Yep, yeah. single rail. Courtney. Courtney. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with Maury on that ir irrigation that should come out. Now, my question is, and this is one for the board, because we've discussed these sorts of things before, um, tearing the entire irrigation system out pipe by pipe can maybe be more of a curse than a cure. Um, is it, oh, it, are we fine as a commission? simply requiring them to remove all the heads and the control mechanisms that mm -hmm. are Yeah, just abandon it, yeah. 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 Just yeah. Everything from the, the system. house out to where the control box, and including the controls, they pull all that out. Yep. That's probably close enough to just... Oh, yeah, then to take all... No, you don't want they don't to have to okay. pull the pipes out. Yeah. No. No, you're right, it costs more damage. 
Okay. I have another question. Sure. And I didn't quite understand where the little keyhole is. You know, that was eventually, that was yeah. the first time we saw it, it was going to mm -hmm. have a patio. stepping patio. stone. Patio, yep. Yeah. Well, now it says grass. Yeah. Grass yeah. is? Mm -hmm. It's a lawn. It's long? Is that what it is? It's going to be That's long, which is why Maury right. wants a little split rail fence right, right, around right. the well, keyhole. No, I understand that, but I didn't know whether it was just going to sort of be natural grasses to have butterflies come in. I don't believe it is a wildflower meadow mm -hmm. type it's grassland. A mow lawn. I, okay. It's a lawn. All right. I'm going on the. I'm going to err on the side of caution and go lawn. Okay. If it turns out to be a beautiful butterfly be habitat, a little wait. They'll never see this little, little split layer of fence they're going to put in. So. I'm just saying. I I do believe it's lawn. That's. I make a motion that we approve this as discussed. Second. And leaving your trees. Leaving the trees. Yeah. I know. Yeah, they yeah, are yeah, already so aware of that. Uh, okay, there's a motion and a second to approve as discussed. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Extension unanimous, so moved. 23 Zell Street, Mary Carroll. Uh, hang on. Yeah. 23 Zell, I had asked them to change the plan to put the first floor elevation wise. Yes. What, what, what are you talking the tree about? Twice. Yes. Yeah, the, the tree with the frequent mile. Yes. Frequent yeah, mile this, is, this is the. <laughs> I think oh, I was sorry. Part of the original. Can I get everybody hang on? No. Courtney, Mike, Betsy, Mary, Jamie. What are they doing with Zell? I don't remember this. Courtney, Mike. Betsy, Mary, Jamie. Oh, that's why I don't remember it. Was Russell was sick. <laughs> you and I were sick, Russell. I'm like, I don't remember this one. <laughs> you both were sick. Because I, I wasn't there. Kristen wasn't here yet. Yeah. <laughs> if you did remember. <laughs> Very nice. You have a problem. So you don't remember. Good that's taste. okay. We want to make sure that you put if the frequent flyer tree doesn't make it. Hold up. Um, confirm and mark existing septic prior to construction so equipment cannot be stored yeah. on it. Relocate cedar if it doesn't survive replant. Finding that the first floor elevation must be at 16. Yeah. That was my biggest trigger. Yep. Yeah. Plan four notes. Okay. And I'm assuming that the cedar is the frequent flyer tree that you're yeah. all It's already been moved once. Okay. It's being moved now, now it's Okay. The average tree, tree has a home for life. It's a beautiful tree. I even yes, I, it I, is. I'm. It, it is. is a beautiful tree. I'm not saying it's not. Maybe well, obviously, they love it. They're moving I think it. We should. I moved the Why can't they find it? I moved the tree. I moved this discussed. Second. This was going to be a quick meeting. Second. Were you on the forum? I got it. Were you on the forum? No. The motion and the second on the table. I'm not voting in this. I'm not in the forum. All those, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. I make a motion to adjourn. Uh, wait a minute. Waste landing. Oh, on next page. Oh, waste oh, waste oh. landing. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh it is. It's on the very back page. Yeah, That's yeah, not no, fair. Guys, waste landing. Waste landing, yes. I know. It's uh, all of us. It's everybody. It's everybody. Right. And I think Mike's point about putting a benchmark on there. Yes, it's huge. I, I didn't care, you know, to, I, he was, was kind of, I don't know why he didn't want to put that on there. But it was, I. supposed to have recharged it. Was it, this is the dock, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I didn't yeah, understand what that why that was a problem. I, he was in the office today. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he plan? dropped it off. I was a little frazzled today. Mm -hmm. I can look at the plan. I can look downstairs to see if one was dropped off. If not, benchmark before they start. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. And the benchmark is not just located on the plan. It's physically in the ground so that the contractor can reference. Okay, they can put a. Uh, Chisel mark on the existing concrete. I know. Yeah, I know. This is but if they've done that the first time, they wouldn't Maybe. be in here. <laughs> Thank you, be. Russell. That's why we're doing it. <laughs>
Somebody wasn't minding a store there. And I, I didn't understand why that was a problem. I yeah, well, know. it's because somebody wasn't like was minding a store. I don't believe it. I mean, I knew this has been a problem since the beginning of the summer because people were coming in to complain at the selectman's office. And I'm like, well, we just approved it. What could be wrong? And they said, well, it's a foot and a half off. Anybody have a, um, a big, a large um, elastic? Yeah. Um, I shot one of these. You know, that's not something that we should be. I mean, we're, I'm concerned that we didn't catch it, but why should we catch it? Yeah, we just know right now. You haven't even made a motion. I make a motion that we have Thank you. Second. I wonder why our meeting was so long. Right. Second. We sidetracked you. Who okay. seconded? Me. Okay. There. All right. So any other discussion from the commission? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Move Amy. to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. In. Second, second. I'm sorry. So we got a motion by Jamie to adjourn and a second by Mary. All those in favor.